Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that you too will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Yesu ya cheya kare Me girma ya cheya kare Yesu ya cheya kare Me girma ya cheya kare That's a word I hear in my spirit Yesu ya cheya Holy there is an end Surely there is an end. That's a prophetic word for someone. The Bible says, surely, let me tell you, hear me, hear me. We don't cry forever. In this kingdom, there is a time when God decides to arise as a man of war. Yes, we are Two things the Lord put in my spirit very seriously. I want us to please pay attention. This will 
prepare us for the great things God is going to be doing tonight, I want to explain a few things. Um, I began to inquire of the Lord what he would want us to take note of to really experience the fullness of our testimonies and to rise in new dimensions of possibilities and the Lord dropped two things number one the first key the Lord would want us to have tonight and I, I want us to please pay attention because as the word of God comes it is your instrument God is not a herbalist everything happens on the platform of his word the first key tonight that will guarantee the hand of God upon our lives is a lifestyle of true holiness. Write it down. A lifestyle of true holiness. That's the first thing the Lord told me. If we want to experience new dimensions, please pay attention, Koinonia. The reason why so many of us may not rise to that dimension that God desires is because we compromise on the revelation and the reality of a life of true holiness. Let me tell you something. Sin has very severe consequences. Hellfire only being the last. But there are many other consequences you will go through here and now. And I mean, I had a little time with God and you know, when God gives words like this, I'm not the preacher who fools myself carrying words for people. I'm the first when God speaks like this, I lock up myself and I cry and I flog it out with God. You are a pastor here. Don't just be a messenger. Be a benefactor of the things that God is communicating. Are we together? That attitude of pride that makes us think this message is for the people. I don't do like that. When God gives a word, it is first for me. First, even before the congregation. Are we together? Sin is a reproach to any destiny. No matter how you want to play around it, it will lead you to the same thing. Listen, let me tell you. God is not a herbalist. God is not a mantra or a genie that you use is not a hexa spell that you use there must be the genuineness of a life i didn't just say a nature a life of true holiness we hide behind the fact that oh holiness is just a nature let me tell you there is both the nature and the life of genuine practical holiness isaiah 59 thank you jesus isaiah 59 are you getting blessed already when it stings you, you receive it as a prophetic word from God and you rise. You don't reject a word when it stings you. When it stings you, it's a sign that there is a spirit that is taking advantage of that dimension. And God wants to set you up. Isaiah 59 verse 1 and 2. I'd like us to read it, please. We'll hurry up those inside and outside. 1, 2, read. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Uh -huh. Neither is his ear heavy that it cannot. What's the limitation? Have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. This is not a parable. This is a reality. And let me tell you, anybody who wants to do business with God, please hear me. You must cultivate a genuine appetite for staying by God's standards. Your humanity notwithstanding. Are we together? Now please don't feel condemned. I'm not condemning you. But God is challenging you. If you want power with God, a lifestyle of genuine holiness is non-negotiable. Oh, but apostle, you don't know what has happened around my life. That's why you are here. You are welcome. That's why you are here. God specifically spoke to me, and now please, 
um, this is by no means insulting anybody, you know, and all of that. I know that there are all kinds of people here, but the danger of immorality and the filthiness of the flesh, write it down. The danger of immorality and the filthiness of the flesh. The filthiness of the flesh is not just maybe immorality as we know. The danger. Now, until you really know God and stay with God, you may not understand the spiritual consequences. Fornication. Adultery for those who are married. And all kinds of immoral things. The Spirit of God spoke to me that these things will short circuit the genuine grace of God upon our lives. Now, I know that this is painful, but if you really came to meet God, this is the key to life. A lifestyle of genuine holiness. Proverbs 28, verse 13. Proverbs 28, verse 13. There is power in admitting your wrong and pouring your heart before God. Foolish people have misled and misguided the church into that understanding that God just forgives by default. Be careful what you hear. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Be careful what you hear. Be careful how you are taught. It says, he that covereth his sins shall what? Please read your Bible. He that covereth his sins shall... He didn't say he that sins. I read a scripture that really surprised me. Hosea chapter 5 verse 15. We are talking about the first requirement. You want to see an upgrade in grace. You want to see God honor you. You want to receive testimonies. A lifestyle of true holiness. Hosea 5.15 Alright, I want us to read. It says, I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge and seek my face. It says, in their affliction they will seek me. Because inevitably they will attract to their life affliction. And it says, I will return to my place. Because the Bible says, the word of God does not return until it is accomplished. But it says that there is a mechanism that can stop the word from working in the life of a man. It says, I will return to my place until they what? They acknowledge. When you have the humility to acknowledge that you need help, you will get help from God. But if you allow yourself to dance in all this rubbish that people bring that makes themselves comfortable, I'm telling you this. Look, let me tell you. You see, when someone is talking to you, find out first whether there is a measure of the result the person is trying to propose to you. Are we together? There are people who know nothing about the anointing, yet they say so much they make a lot of noise and, and, and they, they mock the body over the anointing. The anointing is a priceless commodity. A lifestyle of genuine holiness. Flee immorality, fornication, adultery if you are married. Hallelujah. The filthiness of the flesh. You can't be smoking and prophesying. Something is wrong. Are we together? Now, I'm not condemning you. That's why we are here. This is a family. But, but we must deal with it. You can't swallow all kinds of things. And codeine and all. It's called the filthiness of the flesh. If that price is too much for power, then forget about it. Forget about genuine anointing. I will, it says I will return to my place till they acknowledge. Two scriptures. And then we'll move to the next session. 
Galatians 5 verse 19 to 21. Is God speaking to someone? Very quickly, please, media, help us. Galatians 5, we have a lot to do tonight. I want you to maximize this night, and that's the first instruction from God to all of us. I'd like us to read. Now, please give us, give us amplified. Media, can we have amplified? Is it possible? One, two, read. Now the doings, practices of the flesh are clear, obvious. They are what? What's number one in the list? Hold on. I'm just, I'm just trying to, let me tell you something. I wish I were not the person who was going to talk about this thing. But you see, immorality is not just an act. Immorality is a spirit. It does something to your spirit man. Are we together? And so when you find out that this is a challenge in your life, assuming that it will be solved by itself is a dangerous thing. You run to God. Are we together? You run like the deer panting after the water brooks. And he lists all of them. First John 1 verse 9, the last scripture on that wise. One, two, read everyone. That we have seen and confess our sins. Is what? Hold on. He is when there is a condition. There is a condition. He says if we confess our sins, um, you can go back to Amplify. God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In fact, verse, verse 8, when you read from verse 8, um, can we just back up one verse? It says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Then the next verse says, but if we confess. Confess is not these religious things that people do around but let me tell you something. There are times you need to stay with God. That's why I encourage retreats. Write it. If you are writing. Look, if you are a Christian, I am personally convinced that any Christian who does not have periodic seasons of retreat will never be able to last. Retreats are powerful times of self-examination and exposition. It doesn't mean you have to do anything bad. The light of his glory comes upon you and God steps the bar and blesses you and anoints you. The issue of sin must be dealt with. How do we solve the problem of sin? Number one, you must be born again. You must be born again. There are many church goers. There are heads of departments. There are pastors. There are so many people who have not given their lives to Jesus Christ. Please, let me tell you something. Trying to receive something from a God you do not want to commit your life to is self-deceit. Are we together? There are people here, for instance, who have come. They may not be ready to accept the Lordship of Jesus, but they want the healing that flows from him. The ultimate solution to the sin problem is a genuine encounter with Jesus Christ. Are we together? The Bible says this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life, right? And it says this life is in his son. It says he who has the son. You cannot have life by ignoring the son. It is by embracing the son. That you have eternal life. Say amen. You must be born again. The next key is in John 8.34. John 8.34. And then Romans 6.23. I just want to deal with this. Because it came very seriously upon my spirit. And I believe it's a challenge for us. Now I want you to read it. John 8.34. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Whoever commits sin is a one. That means under the dominion. 
He didn't say whoever commits sin is a bad person. But that you have allowed the dominion of sin over your life. 6 23 of Romans. 6 23. Romans 6 23. One to read. Hold on. Change the word wages to salary. Are you ready? One, two, three. Again. If you work for me and I don't pay you, am I a good person? Are we together? If you work for me, what do you expect at the end of the month? Even if there's strike, you expect that there is a, a what? So the Bible says, whosoever commits sin is a slave to sin. Meaning sin is his master. And the Bible says, that man pays. What does he give? Death there does not just mean ceasing to live. Affliction. Are we together? Woes. Curses. All kinds of things that can come upon a man's life and impede his progress. The salary of sin is death. But it says, but the gift of God is what? Eternal life through Jesus our Lord. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, grace, grace, grace. If you are not praying this prayer, you are really arrogant. Pray this prayer from the depth of your heart. Grace, oh God. The vicissitudes and the challenges. As a pastor, pray. As a married man, pray. Don't say I'm married. As a married woman, pray. There are spirits that hunt only married people. Grace. I mortify my body by the grace of God as an instrument of righteousness. Pray. Don't let the devil condemn you. But please cry unto God. Say, Lord, I need your power genuinely in my life. I need your power. I need your glory genuinely in my life. Fresh unction. Hallelujah. And please hear me. In case you are here and there is any sickness, any disease that came as a result of sin, I have good news for you. Our God is still a merciful God. You hear what I'm saying? Our God is still a merciful God. Savior, he can move a mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Write this down. Practice periodic self-examination. Especially when you think everything is alright with you. Listen to a secret that I give you. Practice periodic. I don't care who you are. Practice periodic self-examination. Self-examination. Number two, send out of your life unapologetically people whose atmospheres cause you to walk in sin. Roommates, you must not stay in their room. Hear what I'm telling you. I'm giving you a big secret. Send them away. I'm staying with my uncle. That's why. Stand up. Let me tell you, if you get out of that house trusting God, the God of your salvation will arise for you. Hallelujah. A guy who asks you out, sister, and says, while you are thinking about answering him, you should be sleeping with him first before you decide whether you go out with him or not. 
Don't insult him. Run away and cut the spirit. Koinonia is quiet tonight. You want power, you want miracles. God is not a herbalist. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's be sincere with ourselves. If you really want to see the outstretched arm of God, you have to cry and say, God, help me. And in case you are here arrogantly saying, I'm free, yet, yet, the Bible says, let him that thinks take heed. Immorality, smoking, drinking. It's sad that you have to say these things. But there are people, we have all kinds of explanation. The alcohol, the Bible said in the New Testament, the Greek word for wine is alcoholic. I don't care what justification you bring to be a drunkard. A drunkard is a period. The Bible says wine is a mocker. I take it once in a while. You will suffer once in a while. Because it's when your breakthrough is coming that the temptation for liquor will come. Are we together? How about pornography? How about masturbation? Oh, I don't sleep around. It's a spirit. Why am I saying these things? These are the things that authorize the power of darkness. Please, don't say, especially this masturbation thing and pornography. I'm not condemning you, but don't ever, if anybody has preached to you and has said it's all right, Joshua Selman is telling you it's a, it's a, it's a cancer of the spirit. That's why you find out your prayer life drives. No matter what happens. But I'm still healing the sick. Continue. Are we together? I want and I'm trusting God that there will be maximum breakthrough. But we have to be serious. Mean business with God. Mean business with God. The allergy sends me money once in a while. Please delete his number tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. The military officer, it's not every time. It's three times a year. Delete his number even before we start ministry. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every man that named the name of Christ depart. Psalm 66 verse 18. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. There is something that can make a man's prayer to not reach heaven. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart. So when we begin to pray tonight, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, in this miracle service, this addiction is over. I have to end it. Are we together? I burn all my MBs. I buy my phone and I spend all my MB watching nonsense. Naked photos, all kinds of things. No, it's a spirit. See, anything you cannot control is a spirit, including food. Don't think I'm just talking. I'm, I'm going to come. Everybody has a slice in this pie. There must be something that relates to you. I don't have a problem with women. Food. You can't fast because of food. Many of us would rather remain in the same spiritual level forever. Let me tell you, gluttony is as bad as fornication. I hear what I'm saying. Yes. Yes. You can talk about true power that puts situations and circumstances in command. And your entire life, do you know there are people that eat whether or not they are hungry? Once they see it, the same way a man sees a woman and cannot resist her. You see food and you look, ah, whose phone is this? You put one bones, you add another one. You are eating beef until it finishes. There's no rest. It's an urge. You need help. You need help. Are we together? And all kinds of variations of addictions. Those who sleep with little children alone. 
put a naked adult woman, they will pass as if they didn't see her. Children. Men and men. Women and women. My name is Joshua Selman. Let me tell you, if you don't deal with these things, you will never go far. You will rise up as usual. But ask Samson. I will arise as before. And all of a sudden, this glory Am I condemning you? No. Will I be quiet about it? No. Because you must receive something tonight. So that you will not be healed and delivered and the demons even mock you. Before prayer, they just jump out and wait for you. That's what happens to a lot of people. Is it not in your Bible? I'm going to share quickly on that. When a spirit leaves a man, what does it do? It leaves him forever. The Bible says Satan departed from Jesus for a season. Came back again when there was another pressure. And Jesus started negotiating. Mercy, Father, if it be thy will, take this cup. Can we negotiate another way? But he overcame. He said, nevertheless, not my will. Hallelujah. Please, I want us to be sincere with ourselves tonight as we cry before God. I know what I've said is very uncomfortable to many of us. But this is the key. When you pray, you clear out that way. Satan does not like what I'm preaching. It takes a lot of courage to preach what I'm telling you. But that's the key. Are we together? But I think I'm okay. No, opportunity has not yet been created. So instead of sitting down to say, I hope my roommate is hearing. Uh -uh. There's no roommate there's no, I hope my husband is hearing. God, I, God, apostle, God bless you. This stupid man, thank God he came for koinonia. I'm talking to you. There is no pointing fingers. You see, that spirit that exempts you from the word of God, uh, that sense of self-righteousness that makes you feel, I am okay. Talk to Ejimi or talk to Kenny or promise is the same spirit that destroys people. I'd like you to lift up your voice in one minute. Koinonia cried before the God of heaven and said, Lord, it must be broken. Addictions must be broken. I don't care what you read in the internet about them. That alcoholism must be broken. I can't keep destroying my body. Pornography, masturbation. I need you, oh, I need you. Every hour, I need thee. Come, let's be now, my Savior. I come to thee. I need you. Oh, Every hour, shake it, take it, take it, take it, come bless me now, my Savior. I come. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus and righteousness. Pray, shake it, take it, take it, take it. I've come to call that spirit a liar. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah. Listen. Look at me. Some of you can do anything for money. If you must sleep with an animal for money, you would do it. For as long as there is money tied to it, you throw away your Christianity. If it's money, no problem. As long as you will give me money. Someone sent me a text. Uh, was it yesterday or day before yesterday? I was in the middle of a very serious, intense prayer time and then his text came and he said they wanted to give him a job but they said he should give like advance like pay some money 
so that they can process it. And I told him, I said, don't you do that. You cannot mix. You can't, if you are paid for it, where then is the place of God? Please don't say I'm not a Nigerian. I'm not a stupid person. I know what I'm saying. Whatever God cannot do in my life, oh, let nobody do it. He said, lest you will say I made Abraham rich. Who told you God is not rich? You see, all these carnal things we keep doing, we edge God out. When it comes to real issues, we act as if God is not alive. Oh, if God cannot do it, let it not be done. No. I want you to pray and say, Lord, whatever I do not have discipline for, break it out of my life. Pray! Pray! Shabakataya! The secret for fire in a ministry. The secret for fire in a family. It's a secret for fire in a life. It's a painful reality. But it's a key that will take you high. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point on that. Listen. For many people, I have found out that we are not interested in paying the price to create the atmosphere. Everybody say atmosphere. Are we together? You are a brother, anybody, any sister can hop into your house any day, any time, anyhow. Are we together? Lie down on your bed loosely and carelessly. You don't care. 2 a.m. in the night. He's still in your house. What are you doing? We're in a relationship. Nonsense. You are not the first to get married. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. You must create discipline. If you are friends with a roommate... And the roommate is bringing boys all the time to your room. Negotiate. And brothers and sisters, if that agreement, if you cannot reach a consensus like that, find a way of getting out of that place. Someone cannot be sleeping with a lady you are there watching. You will only watch for one month. I assure you. Atmospheres. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. There are things that can be discussed on phone. Discuss it on phone. When we were staying together, Ejimi will tell you, when we were staying together, as years ago, there was an unwritten rule. Let me tell you, these are some of the rules that helped us. God is my witness. My younger sister is here. My younger sister has never slept in my house till today. My blood younger sister. Only two people have stayed in my house. One, Ejimi, and one, my younger brother, the, the day he came. Am I stupid? No. Am I a fool? No. It's called atmosphere. It's the price for atmosphere. Someone comes to your room with visitors and says, please, there's a little birthday party. It looks like you are busy today. Can you give us the room? You thought they just celebrated birthday and drank beer and smoked and left. They left spirits. They left influences. Yes, I know what I'm saying. You get into that room, I assure you, you 
take the grace of God for you to connect again. How about all kinds of petty wars? A lot of us believers have all kinds of compartments on our phone. There is compartment A, gospel. Gospel means anything that reminds you of heaven. And then there is the B part. When you want to socialize. Look, choose ye this day whom you will serve. Choose ye when? Otherwise, I don't care whether they dip you in one gallon of oil. I assure you, you will fall down, you will stand up. Satan will be waiting for you here. You will have dreams that will press nonsense out of you. Shout Jesus, shout Abraham, shout any name you know, nothing will happen. That's what makes us powerless. He told Gideon, said, why have we not seen the miracles of our fathers? He said, take away the idols. My room cannot be a place for somebody to keep beer. Don't take it, but let me use your fridge to make it cold. What are you doing? It's exactly the same thing. Please pray in one minute and say, Lord, the price and the unashamedness to create an atmosphere. An atmosphere. Lift your voice. Pray. The price. My room. My room, my house, my office cannot be a place for rubbish. When they want to bribe, it's not in my office. The meeting will not be held in my office. When they want to fake a miracle, it will not be on my pulpit. Pray, pastors. Don't let any dumb dick and Harry just arise and hold the mic on your pulpit and do all kinds of jamborees. I paid the price to create the atmosphere to host the presence of God. Pray, Koinonia. It's part of the meeting. This is already someone's deliverance. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, only, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Faithful, faithful, faithful. Faithful, 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 you will continue listening to it in your dreams. I guarantee you. And that one is powerful because your body that limits the spirit is sleeping. Ah, you will access anointings. You will wake up under a strong presence. I know what I'm saying. Number two, let's hurry up. The second challenge or the second key I think the rain is settled, so as many, if it's not an interruption, please um, arrange them outside. If they can still squeeze in, that's all right. Number two, let's hurry up, please. The reality of demon spirits and the character of their operation, write it down, is something you cannot ignore and prevail in this life. The reality, demon spirits, alongside the character of their operation, the Bible again and again cautions us and says that we should not be ignorant of his devices. Satan has a way he operates. There is a way, there is a system 
that Satan operates. Anybody who ignores the reality of demon spirits alongside an, an insight into the character of their operations will pay the price severely. Let's look at two scriptures very quickly. Luke chapter 4, please, verse 14 and 18. Media help us. Luke 4, 14 and 18. The Bible says Jesus took the scroll, right? He, the messianic prophecy. And um, go to verse 15, please. Next verse. And he taught in their synagogues being glorified of all 16. You are reading down to 18. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Right? What did he read? Then it was given to him. It was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Esaias. And when he had opened the book, he found a place where it was written. The Messianic prophecy. 18. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. To bind up the broken hearted. To preach what? Deliverance to the captives. There are people under captivity. The reality of demon spirits in our world. And the fact that they influence people. Christians and non-believers alike should not be ignored. Are demons real? The Bible says so. Is Satan real? The Bible says so. Do they oppress people? Yes. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Behold, I give you power, authority. The word there is exousia. Behold, I give you power. Luke 10 19. To tread upon serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy. So there is the enemy and the enemy has a measure of power. Are we together? And he says, and nothing shall by any means harm you. Look at me, please. Look at me. Koinonia, look at me. Every time Jesus commissioned people, the first thing he told them to do was to cast out demons. Not heal the sick. Cast out demons. Right? When you read... Um, Let's look at a scripture, Mark, Mark 6, we'll read verse 7, then we'll run to 13 quickly, Mark 6, 7, 13, and he called unto him the 12, read on please, it's projected, and did what, and began to send them forth two by two, he gave them power to do what, unclean spirit, unholy spirit. Spirits that are out of the influence of the Holy Spirit. They are called unclean spirits. They are everywhere like the air we breathe. They are responsible for the anger problem in people. Are we together? They are responsible for the barrenness in people. They are responsible for delay and retrogression. They are the ones who appear to you in dreams and sleep with you. They are the ones who appear and cause miscarriages. They are called unclean spirits. Now, regardless of the theological stratification, they are still spirits. The Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? But against what? Principalities, uh -huh. powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. They are all called unclean spirits. And there are three ways that their, their ministry or their life found expression in the earth. Number one is covenants. It's the most powerful way demon spirits advance their cause. Covenants. Number two is ignorance. Ignorance of the precepts and the principles of God. The light shines in darkness. So when there is no light, darkness remains. Are we together? And then number three, disobedience. 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 Demon spirits are real. A Christian cannot be possessed, but he sure can be influenced. Absolutely. Galatians 5, when you read from verse 16, this I say then, 
walking in the spirit and the Bible, he was talking to the Galatian church, people who had already encountered Christ. Are we together? But this is what he says. This I say then that you walk in the spirit so that you will not gratify what? The desires of the flesh. Then he says the flesh lusted after the spirit, the spirit after the flesh. Two of them are consistently contending. What does that tell you? That you're a Christian does not mean that these demon spirits will not attempt to influence, manipulate, or wage control over your life. There's nothing embarrassing when a Christian is delivered. The operation looks like possession, but it's not possession. And now this is the balance. I'm going to create a balance. Because there are all kinds of prophetic ministries because they do not have a sound word base. Right? And let me tell you something. Even the prophetic and the supernatural is limited by the recipient's understanding of the operation of the word. Are we together? I can be a genuine prophet of God, but because I do not have a sound understanding of scripture, I can look at this beautiful lady looking at me and see a spirit behind her. And based on my interpretation of that vision, I call her a witch. Are we together? And then I fabricate a strategy and I say, Oga, the solution to dealing with this, your wife, seeing that she's a witch, is to leave her. So that is my, that is my advice based on my limitation. It may not be that I saw a wrong vision, but because my vision was not dealt with on the strength of the word of God for correct interpretation, it's not enough to see. Understandest what thou readest. He was looking, he was not understanding. Demons are real. They are here in this place tonight. Are we together? They came with many people. They came with many families. Many well-meaning people carried them. Our job is to separate you from them. That's what deliverance is. It's a separation. Let me tell you something. In the most authentic definition, deliverance is salvation. Right? The most authentic, in its purest form, deliverance is salvation. It's a complete translation. So every other thing you do is in support of that understanding. Demons are real. Let me tell you, you will be surprised to find out how many things have not been working in your life and can be credited to the ministry of these wicked spirits in our lives. There were many things in my life that didn't used to work for a long time. I tried, I did all I knew to do. But when I realized that, you see, let me tell you something. Because demon spirits have an advantage, hear me. Because demon spirits have an advantage of the realm of the spirit. When you try to fight in the flesh, you will be defeated forever. Every time, at all times, regardless of what you try to do. Someone promises to help you. You go to bed, a stranger appears again. The person gets up in the morning and tells you, I can't remember telling you what I said. Please get out of my office. Something made them do so. The same way there is an anointing that can call a destiny helper into your life. And you say, sorry, I don't need any help again. You say, God told me to do it. I don't like you, but I have to do it. Because something, may that thing, whatever thing it is, it must come upon you today. Yeah. Where men arise to make your life easy. Hallelujah. Demon spirits are real. Don't be embarrassed when you find out that these spirits are leaving you. Rejoice. And listen, please, don't just fall down and stand up and check yourself and feel embarrassed and then go back. No. And by the way, it has nothing, deliverance has nothing to do with falling down and manifesting. It has everything to do with the word of God prevailing over your person and casting out every nonsense that is roaming around your life. So you may be standing quietly and they are flying out of you, flying out of your destiny. The, when that, I'm teaching you this so that you will know what to expect and know how to appropriate it. So that when you leave this place, you now expect that that door that refused to open. Now that you know a spirit caused it, you expect it to open. So you start saying in the name of Jesus, I expect favor. I expect favor. A woman who has not been able to give birth, has not been able to take in. Husband is well, 
wife is well, both of you go to the hospital. They say there's nothing wrong as far as they know. All right, take it, madam. She cannot take it. Plants don't need consultation to take it. Animals don't need consultation. As haphazard as they are, the law still works. Because demons are not interested in the animals. They are interested in human beings. They are interested in your destiny. That's why they will refuse that you will not get that child. But the devil is a liar tonight. What of all those, all those lumps and all those nonsense that grow around your body? Lumps in your breast, lump in your stomach, lump every part, movements around your body. What do you think is called? The Holy Spirit does not move in people in a foolish way. The Holy Spirit is, is, is he's an intelligent spirit. He does not oppress people. Do you know there are people here who cannot sleep? Young people, you, you, you watch them and they are still awake. Because the moment they close their eyes is a nightmare. Demons are real. The last key, number three. That the Lord will have us tonight to know. All of us must possess this if we really need results, is your faith. Hmm. Your faith, your faith, your faith, your faith, your faith. Your faith. My faith reaches out to you. And I believe your word. Listen, let me tell you something about faith. Most of us, our understanding about faith is just for reception. But faith is also an instrument of defense. Ephesians 6 verse 16. Therefore holding forth the shield. Because there are times between prophecy and manifestation you will need to stand. Faith becomes the weapon you use to shield yourself. That when another word comes and says, Kai, can you imagine Pastor Alpha, is this thing really working? And then the shield of faith, you lift it. And you say, no way. I know that my Redeemer liveth is working. If it's working, show me the evidence. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. It says, above all, taking the shield of what? Faith. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench, quench, quench the fiery darts of the enemy. Listen, faith is the result of an understanding. Faith is the result of an understanding. It produces persuasion from the Greek word pistis. Conviction based on an understanding. He says, but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded, just like I'm persuaded that someone's testimony will turn around, I mean, somebody's life will turn around tonight. I am persuaded Listen, it's not just what you do that produces result, but the faith that backs what you do. The conviction that backs what you do. Faith is powerful. The Bible says by it, the elders obtain a good report. So if you need a good report, you will need that faith to obtain it tonight. And there are many of us who are trusting God for good reports. You want to change the doctor's report? You want to change every kind of nonsense report that the devil has brought. It will take faith. It will take faith. Conviction. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it everyone. Say in the name of Jesus. I believe in the power of God. I believe that nothing is impossible for God. And tonight. God. Through his spirit, will birth my testimony. I believe that with all my heart. I came in, there were people in Abuja. My Bible, uh, at the back of my Bible, is full of all kinds of people's prayer requests. You cannot imagine people dropping their prayer requests. Apostle, please, as you are going back, can we drop our prayer requests all the way? Because there is a God that answers prayers. Please hear me, Koinonia. Tonight, like we prayed earlier on, 
I want you to get angry with the situation in your life. You see, I cannot make you tired of it. I can only encourage you. He said, woe to them who are at peace in Zion. The day you are tired, you will change. Let today be that day. Rise up on your feet. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Lord, my time has come. Are you praying, Koinonia? Lord, this health thing, I can't remain sick forever. No. This SS genotype, this HIV, this cancer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one more prayer point and then we'll begin to minister. I'd like you to say, Lord, grace to not doubt you tonight. Please lift your voice and pray. Don't be a doubter. Lord, I believe in you. Lord, I believe in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me add one more prayer point in our lives. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, whatever must come upon my life for me to move forward. Hold on. Let it come. And whatever must leave me, I have no loyalty to you. I don't care where you came from. Tonight I part ways with you forever. Lift your voice and pray. that must land upon my life today every grace every spirit every dimension tonight you must come upon my life and everything that must leave me I'm tired of any luggage upon my destiny Are you praying? Those online, make sure you are praying. Right where you are, at your home, so wherever you are streaming from. Hallelujah. 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 One of the graces I'm trusting God to come upon our life is grace for accelerated advancement. Listen, listen. There are many of us, our pace of movement is slow. You can't look at your life and say, A, B, C has happened within this time. It's not a good testimony. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I must move. Oh, I must move. There must be advancement. The overflows. Make sure you are praying. God is sharing you where you are. Yes, oh God. 
and parting ways forever. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. Listen. You must contend with prophecy. Oh, this bad luck upon my life must leave. I was not cursed like that. Even if it's a curse, it must go. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's a war to them who are at ease in Zion. There is enough function tonight to deliver the result you desire, except you are not interested. If you truly are interested and you are angry enough, tonight is not the time to spectate and pitch and gist. Anybody does that kind of thing for you tonight, know that the spirit is using that person. You can't come here and waste your time. Hallelujah. I'm about to pray for you. I'm about to speak. Please, I want you to pray. Mention every negative thing that you know has happened, patterns in your life that you know must change and say, God, arise for me tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, it must go over my family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen. 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 Before God deals with our lives, we are going to be praying first and foremost that God would deal with our families. See, let me tell you something. It's not your fault that you came from that family, but it's your fault if you allow what came from here to destroy you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Believe what I'm saying, oh, Koinonia. Believe what I'm saying. I love you too much to not lie to you. There are, there are ties and strongholds that are stopping people from rising. Lift your hands, everybody. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Listen, don't get too used to the fact that it's just about speaking and then people fall under the anointing and come be serious while prayers are going because it is at the word of God they respond. They are listening to me, I'm speaking, but until the command is given, there is nothing to confirm. I want to pray. Many of you will be very surprised. Open up your spirit. It's time for God to visit you and visit your family. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, please. My God. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit pointed arrows. Listen. Pointed arrows. Pointed arrows. And on those arrows, I see like papers placed on the arrows containing the names of people names of families names of territories that's what the Lord is showing me right now and we are going to pray Listen, the power of God is going to come very strongly upon people it's, it's not just you but your family are we together and once that happens know that the time has come to pray it and declare that deliverance lift your hands I want to pray now Father, you brought us here to change lives. 
change testimonies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is giving me a very crazy instruction. Just lift your left hand. Be stupid. I've started my stupidity. Just follow me quietly. Just lift your left hand up to God and let me do the speaking. You don't have to say anything. Please, all those who I'm going to speak to now that the power of God comes on them, let's begin to have them outside. <sighs> Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now. My God, I'm seeing so many people. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just responding to the Spirit. Lord, you ask us to lift our left hands up. Whatever that means, there are people. I see fire right now. It's going to begin to come on people. Lord, the moment that comes on their family, let there be massive deliverances. At the count of four, that will happen now. One, two, three, four. Bring them out. Bring them out. Bring them out right now, inside, outside. I'm seeing the spirit of God. There's fire moving to families. Please, let's save time. At the word of the Lord, I place the word of the Lord upon that situation of witchcraft. Inside, outside. It's over, it's over, it's over. It's over. I come with a word of prophecy. I prophesy as I've been commanded. Miracles. Deliverances for families. Enough is enough, oh God. Bring them. There are so many people outside. So many people outside. All the overflows. I see miracles. It's like fire. It's like fire. Hallelujah. Keep your hands down. I am seeing fire and it's going to come upon the heads of people. And the Lord is saying it is still the deliverance. Lord, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Right now, all over the congregation, I prophesy it like fire. I see like an eruption, a volcanic eruption coming on the heads of people. The heads of people. Shake it, Where you are, the fire will meet you there. Where you are, where you are. The enemy has done this. We command every havoc. We command every havoc. Kaba Tayata. I tell you, I see deliverance for many families. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. I command every spirit. Causing the tragedies in my family. Be exposed now. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. The light shines in the darkness. The light shines in the darkness. As you are praying, the power of God will come upon you. As you are praying, the power of God will come upon you. Be exposed. The spirits eating up finances. Eating up joy, eating up peace. Kapa ta ta ta, ekerato soto bashiata. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I see written on this pulpit altars. And I want to pray. An altar is a platform erected by men 
that grants access to spiritual operations. Altars, 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 altars. At the count of seven, I tell you many people, this is not just families now. One, two, three, four, get ready. Five, six, seven, right now. Right now, right now, right now. Altars, catch fire. Altars, catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Shake it, take it, poro sotoba. Lift your hands, everybody. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. The Lord is asking me to call situations. The moment I call them, all those who are victims of it, the power of God will come upon them. Please, we are going to be fast. Right now, I pray the spirit of failure upon people. I'm seeing it. Lord, wherever they are, right now, at the count of three, let there be an exposition. One, two, three, go, go, go. Failure, 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 causing failure in lives, failure in destinies, failure in ministries, failure in business. Failure in academics. Every form of failure, fire is coming on it right now. Fire is coming on it right now. Inside, outside. No, you can't stand it. It's your deliverance. It's your word. It's your prophecy. It's your word. That's why you came. Failure. Lift your hands, everybody. I'm seeing chains, and the Lord is saying, Let delay leave my people. That's what I'm hearing. Lord, where are those whose lives have been under one spot, inside and outside? At the count of three, I like you to shout, Jesus, delay is leaving now. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Delay, delay, delay of all kinds, of all kinds. Parato soto Delay. Delay. All kinds of delay. All kinds of delay. All kinds of delay. Be broken now. Now. Let her go in the name of Jesus. Let her go. I break that chain now. 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 That chain of delay. That chain of delay is broken over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. God is breaking delay. Listen. Hallelujah. I prayed this prayer in this place before. And the Lord is asking me to pray it again. That the destinies of men can be exchanged. So that you are walking, but you are not living your destiny. It's like you are living another person's life. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Please take this prayer seriously. It will do wonders in your life. Lift your hands. Inside and outside. And you watch what will happen now. Lord, I pray. My God. I'm telling you, all I'm seeing in this place is fire. 
any man here, any woman whose destiny has been exchanged so that the life you are living is not your blueprint right now. Let the exchange, let there be another exchange, another exchange, another exchange. The power of God is coming on people right now, right now, right now. Release their destiny. Release that mother's destiny now. Release that mother's destiny now. My goodness. It's your destiny. It's your destiny. You can't leave another person's script. Every witchcraft, every manipulation, I cause it now. I cause it now. I cause it now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to pray for people with strange movements in their body. I tell you, I feel fire. It's like people are literally bathing in fire. Strange movements. I want to pray. There are many ladies, many mothers under this category. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Every stranger, there is a lady, you feel a physical snake, physical snake moving on your body. But right now, in Jesus' name, at the count of three, fire from the throne. Fire from the throne. I command those spirits roaming around the bodies of God's people. One, two, three, go, go, go. Go, go. Go now. Leave their bodies. Strange objects. Strange objects. Strange objects. Strange objects. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, sisters, lift your hands. I want to pray a very powerful prayer for our sisters. The devil will prefer to get one woman to ten men. Because a woman is a gate in the realm of the spirit. I tell you, no power will stand. Something is about to jump out of somebody's life. Ah, yeah, yeah. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Yeah. Break every chain. Let her go right now. Your destiny must open up. In the name of Jesus Christ. Break every chain. Lift your hands, sisters. There are many ladies here under several oppressions. That's why many things are not working. But sisters, as surely as the Lord lives, at the count of three, I'd like you to shout Jesus. You will be surprised to see what will happen to you. Are you ready? One, two, three. Deliverance for you right now. Deliverance. Help them, my goodness. Please help them. Gates, 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 be broken, gates, be broken, Kapataya, gates, be broken, gates, be broken, gates, be broken. I'm praying it again, lift your hands. Ay, ay, ay. Every devil that came here with you must let you go. Lift your hands. There are sisters. There is already a programming on your destiny to fail. A programming to be barren. Who is this God that can look into time? Wherever they are, at the count of three, may the power of God fish them out. One, two, three. Take that fire. Take that fire. 
Take that fire. I open your destiny. Every lady, every sister, you are a gate. You are a gate in the realm of the spirit. Mighty deliverance, mighty breakthrough, mighty breakthrough, mighty breakthrough is over, is over, is over by the power of the Holy Ghost. Over, over, over. Break every chain. Break every chain. Yeah. Break every chain. Hallelujah. Now I want to pray for the brothers. Lift your hands. Listen, let me tell you. There is a spirit that makes men not to be productive. Hear me. It's a, it's, it's a mighty deliverance that will happen to many men right now. Pay attention. There are men who are just going old. There's nothing happening in their lives. It's not your fault. There are keys that have been withheld from you. But that thief must be exposed. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Ancestry. That's the first thing we are dealing with the brothers. Brothers, lift your hands. I want to pray. Many of you will be surprised to see what happens. Every spirit of ancestry, every spirit of inheritance over any brother here, stopping his advancement at the count of three, some of you will be very surprised. That fire will come on you. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Take it. Take it, take it, that fire, help them please, help them, my goodness, Kaparata Kata, brothers are coming under this unction, it's time to move forward, it's time to move forward, help them, I cause that spirit, I cause that spirit, I cause that spirit, Hallelujah. God does this all the time. And I don't know why God is doing this again. <laughs> ah. If he did it before, he could do it again. Say. Listen, I see something strange happening. Strange happening. Strange happening in the spirit. And I'm seeing the spirit of the Lord moving. And God is saying he's visiting Easternans. Easternans, evil people. That's what I'm seeing. There are altars that need to be broken. Please pay attention. I'm about to pray right now. Wherever they are, always he will do it. You are from the east, get set. Be sensitive. Come on, you shouldn't be doing that. Shaparato kaparatia. Eastern Lord, wherever they are, it will come like fire on you. You will be surprised to see what will happen to you now. The Spirit of God goes to the east. The Spirit of God goes to the east and is bringing deliverance. Deliverance. Strange deliverance. Evil people. Strange deliverance by the power of the Holy Ghost is visiting your soil, visiting your foundation, visiting your soil. If it did it before, it can do it again. Same God back then, same God right now. If it did it before. 
Abia, 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 Abia said, Shakata Barata, Abia, Abia, the Spirit of God is moving across Abia, miracles, breaking foundations. If he did it before, he can do it again. Same God back then. Hallelujah. Many of you wonder why God does these things. There are signs and wonders. He steps into, you will see the testimonies that will come from this thing. Strange visitation. Lift your hands, everybody. Joshua Selman. God be praised. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I'm walking in the spirit and I see a map. And the Lord is asking me to jump upon it. And I see Kaduna. Southern Kaduna. That's what I see. Right now, Lord, at your word, move. Southern Kaduna. Visiting men and women. That's what the spirit of God is saying. I speak it. I place the word of God upon it. Lord, go to that region right now. Southern Kaduna. Southern Kaduna from Saminaka to Zonkua. Everywhere. Move. Let the power of God touch people. Liberty for territories. Liberty for territories. No matter where you are, I'm telling you, Southern Kaduna, fire is falling. Fire is falling upon your soil. Upon your soil, Southern Kaduna, Southern Kaduna, that's what I see. Southern Kaduna, connected to Southern Kaduna, there is a miracle happening. Altars in Southern Kaduna, I come against you by this apostolic and prophetic mantle. Leave God's people now. system. It's not something you just do by guesswork. It's the spirit of God. The spirit of God. The spirit of God. God is still touching Kaduna people. I'm still hearing it in my spirit. God is still touching Kaduna people. There's no escape. Any family tied to any altar comes under fire. Any Kaduna family married to Kaduna Living in Kaduna State. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands while still praying. I want to pray for students now. Something miraculous will happen there now. I want to pray for students. Because I see conspiracy. To short circuit people's performances. I'm going to pray. But there is a God in heaven with an all seeing eye. And there is an unction he can release. I'm going to pray. Listen, let me tell you. You will be surprised to hear the testimonies that will come. The way God is walking this night is very supernatural. 
if the power of God comes upon you, I want you to know that an angel is doing something over your result. Just hear what I'm saying. Hear what I'm saying. I'm speaking by the Spirit. Father, there are people whose results need to be worked upon divinely. And where are they? I see almost 45 people. Right now at the count of three. One. Results. Two. Three. Let the angels begin to move. As they move, it will affect you. As the power of God touches you, your result is being worked upon by the power of the Holy Ghost inside and outside. Results, results. Carry of us receiving the mercy of God. Receiving the mercy of God. God upgrading CGPS. Upgrading CGPS. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. CGPS by the power of the Holy Ghost. Supernaturally by the creative power of prophecy. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Everything that has refused to let you smile, hear me? That joy and laughter will not come out of your mouth. I stand tonight in the name of Jesus. I bring that thing under fire. Amen. I bring it under fire. Amen. I bring it under fire. Amen. Shake a ta ta ta. I bring it under fire. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Just lift your hands and be silent if you can. A miracle is happening. A miracle is happening. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing letters in the spirit. And these are employment letters. Hold on. Just keep your hands. Just do what I'm asking you to do. You will be surprised. Many of you for you and for your loved ones. The Lord is just asking. Just lift your hands. Father, at least 17 people. Inside, outside, there are up to five people online. Supernatural jobs. May the angels of breakthrough take this word to the people right now. Right now, right now. Right now, receive it. Receive those letters in the spirit. Receive it in the spirit. Receive it in the spirit. Receive it in the spirit. In the spirit. For you, for your loved ones. I don't care what they read. I don't care what they have. We give them jobs by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I see at least four people. Three of them are ladies in the congregation. Your mothers are due for promotion. But they've done everything they know to do. As I'm speaking right now, an anointing will come upon you to signify what he's doing to them. Lord, go ahead. Locate them. Promotion. I force it. I force it now. I force that promotion. Take it. Carry it for your mothers. Whoever is sitting on their promotion, whoever is sitting on their promotion, the judgment of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for the sick. But, um, There are two women I want to pray for here. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Now, I know there are many people. Listen, there are two women particularly. One of them, the anointing of, please, no standing for wife, no standing for anybody. If you are not the person, um, sit down. 
If you are not married, don't come here. Praise God. Please. The two women by themselves. I'm going to pray. That lady, oh, let me let me let me pray for her. that devil. Let her go. Don't disturb us. Don't waste our time. Out! Out now! Out in the name of Jesus. I curse you by the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus. You are living. Release her family. Release her destiny right now. The noise maker. Out you go and don't waste our time in Jesus' name. I set her free in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, please listen. We are going to pray for those two women. I don't know if there are here or two of them here. There's one of them. Um, I'm seeing one of them. The anointing of the spirit is going to come upon her. I don't know who that person is. But there's one. Please, we have such people. We have to be fast. If I mention your case once, we give you one minute. There's no response. We have to move so that God can help us. Please. Except if they are outside there, then that's all right. If, if married women that need the fruit of the womb, we have to pray for them right now. Praise the Lord. How many of us are trusting God for healing miracles in our bodies? Let me see your hands. I know many of our mothers are in this category. No matter what the case is, who is it? Stand up. The power of God will come upon that person. Please make sure they are married, though. Please stand up, stand up, madam. It's okay. Um, madam, madam, it's okay. Yes. Madam, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. How many years have you been married? 20 years. 20 years. No child. Look at me. 20 years. 20 years. Madam, look at me. Look at me. It's okay. 20 years of marriage. If, if that woman gave birth to a child by now, that's the other person, right? Barrenness. Why am I seeing her? I'm seeing chains around her stomach. You must remove it now. Remove it now. You are a devil of darkness. You hear my voice. Take off that chains now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's no such thing as barrenness. It's nonsense. When a spirit sits on your stomach, there's no way a child will come. If you like, do whatever. You go to India and come back. You only waste money. There is a God. Madam, please look at me. I want to pray for you. Are you here with your husband? You came. And you decided to. Where is your husband? Okay. okay, look at me, madam. Do you believe God can give you a child? I believe that's why I came. It's okay, it's okay, madam. Look at me. Look at me, madam. Place your hand on your stomach. I want to pray. How many of us believe this woman will come and stand and testify? If you are doubting this, you've not been in Koinonia. Madam, look at me. I want you to shout as loud as you can, I receive. Just shout it. I receive. God, ba. let me tell you that is that is not working in your life does not mean it's not available. I've told you this thing. You have to believe there are dimensions in God. This woman you see will come and stand here with her child. Why is she here, madam? Why are you here? You are married for how many years? Give her the mic. How many years? Ten years. The anointing is on you. Lay your hands on your stomach. Look at me, madam. Shout, I receive, if you believe. I receive! (laughs) 
there's something leaving your body now. Let it go. You are a devil. Let her go right now. Something is coming out of your stomach. That's what I'm seeing. That's what has stopped your barrenness. Go and have your child. In the name of Jesus. Go and have your child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please let me pray. Madam, make sure you people return with your testimonies. We want to pray. Is your husband here? Husband, please come, sir. I want to pray for you. Marriage is between two people, not three people. I look in the spirit and I'm seeing three people. Somebody is a stranger in this equation. Please come, sir. I'm seeing a third person in the spirit refusing to let this marriage work. I'm seeing a third person in the realm of the spirit refusing to let this marriage work. The devil is a liar. We are going to pray. Please hold your hands together. Just one of your hands. Yes, I want to pray. Please put your hand on your stomach. Watch what happens to you. There is a name. Oh. There is a name. There is a name. Lift them. Lift them. Lift them. Lift them. Lift them. There is a name. Let her go. Strangers. Kabataya. What God has joined together and prophesied. That's why I said, hold your hands. Anybody whose hand is not held physically should not be in this equation. Therefore, I prophesy. Any stranger, release what you are putting in a stomach now. I'm seeing a snake. That's what I see in the spirit. I'm looking and I'm seeing a serpent. In the name of Jesus, release her now. Release her now. Kaparatakaya. Marriage was done legally. Therefore, you are an illegal occupant. Release her now. Let there be miracle children. Miracle children. I'm seeing a lady in the crowd. You are standing in for your sister who has been married for five years. Who is that? I want to pray for that person. Five years. Your sister has been married five years. No child. No child. You are the one? Where is she? What's her name? Deborah. Where is she? She's here. How many years? child my brother six years and you the devil wants to give you four years cancel it destiny changer you are the destiny changer will you come and change my destiny my destiny today Just come out at will. What's it? Hold on, hold on. Coordinate yourself. Who is this? Hold on, hold on. Leave them, leave them. It's okay. Victor, leave her. It's okay. Calm down. How many years? Nine years. Huh? Nine years. Where is she? She's in Adrian Bauchi. Kikiamata. Is that the sound we hear with you? Amen. Why are you here, my dear? She has been coming miscarriages. For how many years? Yes. Three years. Yes. Her husband wants a boy, she wants a girl. Who will win? Did you hear what I said? I said her husband wants a boy, she wants a girl. Who will win? The man is the head of the family. See? This thing is being done by an anointing. It's not, it's not, it's not joke. It's an anointing. Look at me. Listen, every lady, place your hand on your womb. I want to pray for you. Just, just place your hand and leave it there. Hold on, not, not for the brothers. Brothers, you don't have a room. Just calm down. I know I'm praying for the sisters. That's why I'm praying. Because you see, listen, just follow what I'm doing. You will be surprised to see what will happen. The Bible, the Bible does not allow you to test.
test whether you are pregnant first before you marry. Is that true? So there is no way you know. You just marry and then find out it's a disaster for a man, a family to pay the price, pay dowry and get married and then there's that nonsense. So lay your hands. I want to pray for you. Let's attack it in advance. If you care for the prayer, lay your hands. For some of you, God is saving you years of misery. I'm seeing a number 21 and this is at least 21 people and families involved. Father, visit them now. Visit them now. Visit them now. I'm praying a miracle is happening to your womb. Visit them now. Visit them now. Visit them now. Right now, everything that wants to plant barrenness in your stomach, for every lady here and those watching online, I command it to leave you right now in the name of Jesus. I command it to leave you right now in the name of Jesus. My dear, look at me. Hold that baby. You, Ejimi, please give her that child. Just hold her so she doesn't fall. Just hold that baby. You are holding this child as a prophetic symbolism for your sister, for you when you get married, and for every other person, and for two other people who are in the congregation. This prophecy is connecting them. Where are they, oh God? Where are they, oh God? The anointing of the Spirit will locate them now. Right now, two of them in the congregation for this miracle. For this miracle. For this miracle. That is, sir. Please let me talk to you. Just give a few minutes. You and the madam close to you. Mommy, please come. You are an usher, but you are praying. Come, let God answer your prayers. This lady is talking to the Lord. What was the issue? It's my sister. You are asking the Lord to do what? Yes, sir. She has put to bed time, but no no bed is at that. Because I'm seeing a spirit. As soon as she's giving birth, this is like an antelope. It eats the children. As in, it's the child, sometimes most of the children will grow nine months, you give birth, then they will last for only a few minutes and then they die. Hold my hands. Where is she? Don't, don't cry. Don't cry. Where is she? What's her name? Ladi. Ladi. Ladi will speak to you. Lay your hand on your stomach. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we declare that this, this, this frustration is over. In the name of Jesus Christ. That is how I want to pray for you. Mama, good evening, Mama. Please, please stand up. Who is the stubborn child that you want God to touch? Lift his picture up. Lift up. Lift up. This is your number one prayer. The one you want to marry. Where is the person? The one you want a job for that graduated. Job, job. The one that graduated. The graduates. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Henry. Henry. Mama, this is to tell you that God knows your situation. I hear what I'm saying. Yes, sir. This boy needs to be prayed for. So sir. that this boy, so that they will not want to lock him in police station. Yeah? This, I don't know who the boy is, but... Let it stop, sir. That's what I'm saying, madam. It's okay. You are here for God to visit you. Amen. Amen. Who is Nonso? Nonso. Nonso. I'm hearing the name Nonso. We are going to pray. Nonso. Mama. We are going to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Eh? Very soon. Solomon, you want to marry? You want Planning to? for his wedding, sir. Okay, it's all right. We'll, we'll pray for him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, I pray for you. You came here expecting the power of God to touch exactly. you. Exactly. Huh? Yes, sir. Mama, do you want the pain in your body to stop? Yes, sir. You wake yes, up in the Lord. morning and there's severe pain yes, in your Lord. back. Sir, you know about this thing. 
And the Lord is going to do a great miracle for Mama. Amen. Because Mama, I'm seeing you. You can't wash for long. You bend down to wash and your back is clean. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord who has seen you is going to do a miracle for you. I command by the power of the Holy Spirit. Help Mama in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Please, don't. Who is this? Huh? No, so, my friend, are you not so? Help the boy, his trouser is removing. Who is that? Who brought him out? Maybe we should help him now. <laughs> Sir, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. What do you do, sir? He's the proprietor of his kids. You own a school? Yes. Primary school? Nursery. Nursery and primary? Yes. You've been afraid to start the secondary school? Seriously. Is that true? I've been afraid. Because what is happening in the primary, up and down, up and down, people are taking their children out of your school. They are owing money. And they are owing money. And you are trusting God for a miracle. Yes. Because you too, you need a lot of money now. As you are standing here like this, you need money. Very correct, sir. And this money is much. Don't collect loan. Don't collect loan. Loan is a way to die. Don't collect loan. Sir, I want to pray for you. One of the things you are going to start seeing as you minister the word is breakthrough. You will start seeing strange breakthroughs. Amen. In the lives of people. Amen. And then we want to pray for your school, sir. Things are going down. Yes. What you need is not money. What you need is very qualified teachers who are really willing to teach. Because the people there, they will come today, a few months, they want to leave. Yes. And when they, you know, they want, I will have to pray for you. The devil is a liar. Please lift your hands, sir. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the anointing for speed come upon you, sir. Supernatural speed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Grace and speed for you. Mama, God bless you. Please, who is this? Please, if we have not called your case, just be patient. We are going to pray for the sick now. Why is Mama here? Mommy, please come. Huh? Your son's name is Nonso. What's your name? Nonso. From where? Manam State. You are a student here? No. Dad. Who is Shidi? I'm hearing a name Shidi. 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 Let me pray for the person now. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. Um what you need, this one is not, I'm not even getting any word for your son also. What God is saying, I should prophesy to you, is that he's bringing restoration to your life. God is saying, I should tell you, you see that song that I sang at the beginning of the meeting? Yes, we are I'm speaking how, sir, it's finished. That's what God is saying, I should tell you, that he's going to bring restoration to your life. Supernatural restoration right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hold my hands. I'm not getting any prophetic word for you, but in the name of Jesus, may God step in and do a miracle for you. Come, come and get yourself. You need to pray. Huh? You need academic breakthrough. Receive that grace in Jesus' name. Please, why are these people here? Huh? John. You are serving in prison. Have you started serving? Yes. In a place where? Father, give him favor. As you go, let there be favor in Jesus' name. Amen. You are what? John. John. Yes. From where? Zaria. I said, Sam, Father John. But since you have come out, let me pray for you. Yeah? Lay your hands on your chest. You love God? Yes. Right. John. John, look at me. Please. God can give you a new beginning. You hear what I'm saying? Please, when I make altar call, John, run and join them. Huh? 
I'm going to pray for you, but that statement you made is not true. Oh God, help John in the name of Jesus Christ. Because you see, you have to be serious with God. Oh God, help John in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray. She's older than she actually is. Huh? And there is a there is there is a medical condition. This is a feminine thing that I'm seeing that is responsible for this. Um can I help, sir? Eh? Yes, sir. Okay, Turan Shima, you, you understand English? I'm seeing happy birthday on top of you, and I'm seeing 50 years. How old are you? Shakaran Kina. I born me on 66. 66. 1966. How old is that? 50 years. This woman is 50, but she's looking like 70. The devil is a liar. Huh? I'm seeing something. It's not something I can say in the open, but you need to be healed. And um, this thing started happening to you since when you were about 17 years. Abu Nafara Miki. Yes. About 17 years, this thing started. This is a serious woman issue. This is women talk. Father, we cancel this nonsense. In the name of Jesus Christ, it must live in Jesus' name. Beginning from today, experience the goodness of God in Jesus' name. May the Lord favor you too in Jesus' name. We want to pray for the sick now. This, this is our miracle service. Bear with us. We have to deal with these things. You see that there are so many, there are so many situations. We are praying. Everyone, you can be seated if you can or stand. We are soon going to be done. But I want us to pray. Are we together? Say after me, inside and outside, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please say it like you're serious. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare, I declare that every closed gate standing before my destiny under this corporate anointing swing open now lift your voice and begin to pray please we are not just whiling away time pray participate in the prayer some of us that's what is that's what is affecting our lives every gate every gate every gate every gate Finances, over every end of my life, be open now. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Prayer point number two I will still prophesy it upon your life. Say in the name of Jesus, I call forth by the power of prayer every helper who will give me access to resources, to opportunities, and to new levels. I call them into my destiny. Lift your voice and pray. This is a powerful prayer. It's a very powerful prayer. Hallelujah. 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 I'd like you to prophesy and say in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. As I enter this ember months, I declare that the mystery of divine preservation is upon my life. No death, no accident, no bad news. Lift your voice and cancel bad news. Make sure you are praying. Some of you are just looking. Pray. It's a very serious prayer point. 
No bad news. I speak upon my life. The mystery of divine exemption. Supernatural preservation. Out. Shabaka para toko soto pregedesh. No arrow of witchcraft is permitted to fly over my life. Rise up on your feet, please. Everybody inside, outside. Don't be tired. You're working out your salvation with fear and trembling. Before we pray on the request. I like you to pray and say in the name of Jesus. How about now? Let's be serious. In the name of Jesus. September. October. November. December. Hear my voice. I speak to you. Deliver to my life. Only blessings. No pain. 
no sorrow, no, sorrow. no, regrets. no regrets. Go ahead and prophesy. Release power to your future. Release power to September. You shut your mouth, you shut your destiny. Release power to September. Papa to Soto Keteba. Release power to October. Release power to November. December. No plane crash. No bus crash. No armed robbery. No terrorism. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus, I declare a covering over me and my family members. Wherever they are, the seal of the blood exempts them from tragedy. Listen, I shared some months ago, hold on, I shared some months ago, a vision that the Lord showed me. I'm not one person who will stand and say, I saw this. Sometimes I see these things. I just pray. But it was upon my spirit and I said it. Remember, I spoke about the month of September. Everything you see us do here is prophetic. As you speak, it looks like you are joking, but you are releasing power to your future. He said, declares thou that ye might be justified. Hast thou commanded thy morning? You don't sit down and it delivers everything to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say in the name of Jesus. The seal of the blood is upon my life and my family members. Therefore, every spirit of death and loss and disaster must pass over my life and my family. Lift your voice and pray. No, not upon my life. Not upon my loved ones. They are sealed by the mystery of the blood. No accident. No accident. No death. No obituary. No plane crash. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards this prayer request and begin to turn your request to testimonies. Go ahead. All those online, follow us. We are praying. You submitted your requests and we are praying. Every request. Oh God, you have produced testimonies. Shaba katata. To the God that answers prayers. To the God that answers prayers. To the God that answers prayers. Let there be miracles, testimonies, breakthroughs. Turn around impossible situations, oh God. Let the barren come back to children. Let the poor return rich. Let the captain be set free. Let sinners come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Let your bread be delivered. Let the sick be healed. Let jobless people return to jobs. Building projects completed. Spiritual lives be fired. Pray, pray. I'm going to prophesy upon this request and I want us to agree with a resounding amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we declare, I use this as a point of contact. Lord, there are so many requests here representing the challenges in people's lives. Some for jobs, some for marriages, some for children. Some for breakthroughs. Some for study um, scholarships. Others for health. 
Others for reconciliation. Others for souls. Others for financial prosperity and breakthrough. Others for restoration. Some for deliverance. Others for healing. Lord, I pray in the name that is above all names. We have a covenant of answered prayers with you. Therefore, Lord, arise as a mighty man and turn every prayer request to a testimony in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for all those who have sent their requests on Facebook, on Twitter, on any other platform. Lord, in the name of Jesus, give them strange visitations. Strange visitations from tonight. Strange visitations. And Lord, for every request that made it to this altar, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray, answer everyone in the name of Jesus. Turn every request to a testimony in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. I really apologize. Let me prophesy over our lives. Do you know why prophecy is very powerful? Most of the testimonies that you hear, listen. Most of the testimonies that you hear are as a result of these prophetic words. Are we together? There are needs that God may not reveal and time may not permit to be able to extensively deal with. However, prophecy is powerful. It says in Numbers chapter 6 how that the priest will bless them and speak upon their life. There is something about a prophetic word coming upon your life. Those who know this, that is their edge in the spirit, have received it and it has produced dramatic results in their lives. Those who are careless about it like they are about many other things, never really get to receive anything. Let me tell you, even if it's an impartation, even if it's a dimension of breakthrough, for as long as you stepped your feet here, and for all the thousands following us online, connect, connect. Distance is no barrier in the spirit. It says you have turned my mourning into dancing. And you have turned my sorrow into joy. I prophesy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Joy like you have never experienced from January till now. Experience it in the name of Jesus. Joy like you have never experienced. Experience it in the name of Jesus. Hear me. I speak to your hands. Whoever is not doing anything here. Because God said be fruitful. I don't care whether it's a job, a business. I don't care whether you're a student, a graduate, a retiree. Whoever is having an idle hand. Between now and September miracle service. I put something in your hand. I put something in your hand. I put something in your hand. In the name of Jesus. Not something that will mock you. Something that will bring results. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. I put pressure on your destiny helpers. I put pressure on them. May they respond to you. I put pressure on their spirits. May they arise and help you. May they arise and help you. Hallelujah. Any situation in your life that is a recurrent decimal, it comes as though the breakthrough is coming, then the situation repeats itself. I prophesy no more. No more. No more. No more. In the name of Jesus, no more. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Listen. Someone is speaking here like Mary and saying, how shall these things be? Lord, I, is it true that you will turn my life? I stand in the name of Jesus and I pray. A turn around that will surprise you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. A dramatic turn around. A dramatic turn around. Hallelujah. 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 In 
the last one month of my life, God has brought breakthroughs and things to my life that I have always believed God. But there is something God can do in your life that will make you fear Him. Not just believe Him. I prophesy to someone here. In the name that is above all names. That flight in the spirit that God can take a man and bring acceleration and not just surprise you but even make you fear. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone in business here and it's no stipend. Things are not happening. You turn everywhere. You've done everything you know to do. You need the prophetic. I add that prophetic dimension to your business. I add that prophetic dimension to your business. Every dream that is still on paper, no finances, no grace to bring it out of paper. You have been writing things for donkey years, but the grace to put it at work, I declare between now and next, next month's miracle service, bring evidence, bring evidence, bring evidence, bring results, bring results in the name of Jesus. Anyone called jobless in this place, that you have done everything to do, including giving money to people, and they have not brought jobs to you. I don't know how God will do it. But this mountain mover that can shake every mountain, I pray, may he give you not just a job, a miracle job. Miracle job. Hallelujah. Every family here that is stuck in one place, you try to rise, something brings you down. You try to rise, something brings you down. Now I prophesy to you, the grace for rising, receive it in the name of Jesus. The grace for rising, receive it in the name of Jesus. The grace for rising, receive it in the name of Jesus. Every embargo of bad luck upon your life, it works for others until it gets to your point and people change their mind. I declare in the name of Jesus, in a way you have never seen favor and help, may you experience that throughout the month of September. <laughs> Hallelujah. A dimension of anointing, a dimension of wisdom that you have never seen, receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive wisdom in the name of Jesus. Receive wisdom in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you. Everything that needs to be broken in your life. Habits and encumbrances that tie you down. I command that today is their barrier. Today is their barrier. Today is their barrier. Hallelujah. I want to prophesy for someone who has never stood here to testify. In the name of Jesus. Whatever has stopped you from climbing this altar to testify. I curse that spirit right now. 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 Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards me. I want to speak to you. Everything that makes money run away from your hands. Money has a spirit. You have obeyed kingdom laws, but this thing is not just coming. You will try and labor and labor and nothing will come. These hands that are stretched towards me, as I stretch my hands back to you, by the mystery of divine supply, may you hold something you have never held in your life before. May you hold something you have never held in your life before. May you hold an amount you have never held in your life before. Hallelujah. Two more prayers and we are done. I pray for your spiritual life. Everything that is alive grows. If you are not growing spiritually, something is wrong. 
And the measure, there are two indices to measure your spiritual growth. Number one, your degree of conformity to the image of the Christ. Number two, your comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom alongside their operation. How to make them produce consistently. I pray for you this month. As we round up this month into the next month. Keys that your hands have never held spiritually. Hold them right now in Jesus' name. Keys, mysteries that you have not known. Or mysteries you have had and have not been able to handle. May God give it to you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Finally, this is the prayer that I pray for people with all my heart. He said, you shall anoint, listen, you shall anoint Aaron and his sons. Right? And then he said, you shall take some of your honor and put upon him. How do you take honor and put upon him? Honor. The spiritual mystery that turns a man to a celebrity. Not by walking it. Honor is when men have the capacity to discern and reward what you represent. Hallelujah. I was coming from Abuja today and I stopped in Kaduna at a particular computer outfit just to buy, to quickly buy a laptop and proceed. And as soon as I stepped there, I entered, I saw all of them looking at me. They started jumping as if it was a crusade. Apostle Joshua Selman, I was so embarrassed. They ran, went and called their father, the owner of the place. Uh, they call it Micro Manor in, in, in Kaduna. You know, and they were jumping and they looked. They said, ah, we, we have been blessed by your teachings. You know, God has lifted us. You can imagine the things that have happened. And they said, which laptop are you buying and all of that? And I looked at them. I had to just run away and go out. Because I didn't want a situation where they are doing business, they carry something that is so costly and give. Let me tell you, honor is more than money. Oh. Don't be deceived. Money is very finite. Honor is when men rise up to solve your problems for you. They rise up and make it their business to see you succeed. May somebody here receive that mantle. May somebody here receive that mantle. May a pastor here receive that mantle. May a businessman receive that mantle. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Hallelujah. When you are minding your business and some people are talking and say, how do we bless this lady? As if they owe you. They get up and plan governmental figures discussing how to lift you. And people say, what is the big deal? There is a big deal. It's a mantle. Please, I want to pray it finally. I know, I know that our time is gone. But I want you to receive this thing. There are people here carrying it bodily. When you carry it, it speaks. See, let me tell you. The true proof of sonship is a replication of grace. A replication of grace. A replication that you are carrying something you know the devil knows and heaven knows that this is like an address it will cause good things to look for you i want to pray for you honor makes your life easy otherwise you will suffer for anything everything you are in trouble you pay for it alone there is a mystery of honor and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren i pray for you my god in the name of Jesus, I pray for your people in this great house. You have placed your mantle of honor upon this house and by grace upon my life. I'm praying right now. Everyone under the sound of my voice. Ay, 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 ay. In a dimension you have never seen. Or for those of you who have seen a measure of it in a higher dimension. Receive that mantle of honor. 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 Your thought life. Listen. Your thought life is a mechanism for creating things in your physical environment. Your mind is like a machine. It's a spiritual component that is locked up in you that is responsible for creation. 
I need you to understand this. This is the principle of creation. Many people have been taught that creation is just about speaking. No, it's not about speaking alone. There are two components that must coexist for creation to happen. Listen, every time you speak what is not consistent with your mind, every time you speak what is not consistent with that which is locked up in your spirit, you just wasted your time. Believe me. Even for salvation, the Bible says, with the heart, man believes. And on the strength of that conviction, with the mouth, confession is made, and it will lead to salvation. Are we together now? So, in that same way, the first key to succeeding is your conviction within. That internal work. That coming to a point where your thought life is completely governed by the word of God. We call that state having the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is not just a mind that is spiritual. The mind of Christ is the mind that has been adjusted to think entirely from God's perspective. So your viewpoint is consistent with the word of God. Hallelujah. We have not been taught the consequences of thinking evil. We have not been taught the consequences of having a faulty mindset. Listen, your mind and your thought life will eventually create what you are thinking. Believe me on this when I tell you. Believe me. Eventually. And so Satan destroys our lives, not just by bringing physical tragedies, but because for many of us, our minds have not been fortified by the word of God. We have not embraced the spirit of God enough to produce that kind of alignment and adjustment. We allow all kinds of thoughts. That's why the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not what? Carnal. In other words, this battle is not in the flesh realm. It says, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Then it says, casting down every imagination comes from the word Yetzar. Creative thoughts that are planted by Satan. Because if it is in your mind and it becomes an obsession, it must manifest. It is not if, it is when. Listen, whatever stays in your mind long enough, I guarantee you, no power in existence will stop it from manifesting. Genesis 11. Genesis 11. Oh, I believe in you. I believe in you. Hallelujah. I believe in you. Let's read. This was a strange man called Nimrod Kush. Hallelujah. That the Bible says they, are, they were attempting to build a city. Look at, please, whether it is spiritual or physical is audacious. Let's just, let's, let's take it from there. Are we, uh, there are all kinds of schools of thought, whether it was physical or spiritual. That's not really the most important thing. The fact that it was a conception in the heart of man to build a tower. Listen to how men think. Goto, come, let us build a city and a tower whose top will reach the heavens. And let us by it make a name for ourselves. According to them, they did not see any impossibility. Not impossibility of raw materials. Not impossibility of workforce. Not impossibility of anything. Let's see what happens. Verse 4. Verse 4. And they said, come, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad from the face of the whole earth. Are you ready? Now watch this. This was Nimrod proposing the idea. Are we together? He was proposing the idea because he knew that if the people begin to think, if they can get to a point where that mental picture is in them, the same way it's in him, nothing will stop them. Verse 5. It says, and the Lord came down to see the tower which the children of men did what? Look at it. Not the tower that they are building. In God's mind, they have finished it. Look at this. Is that in your Bible? <laughs> Nimrod says, look guys, come together. Let us build a city. We want something to manifest physically. But we know that this is 
everything is fully possible. So I want to do something to your mindset. Do you guys believe we are able? And they said yes. And God was watching. The moment they agreed, God said the house was finished. He came down to see what they had built. Can you imagine that? That a man had come to a point of persuasion where his thought life has agreed with the word of God. Right? And then the Bible tells us that it will be manifested. Listen, listen. Do you know that God had to scatter them for that plan to fail? God did not sit in heaven and say, look, don't worry, these guys are just silly people. He literally had to bring confusion to their languages so that they no longer would reason with one another. Every business empire you see today, every successful ministry, every impactful believer who has been mightily used by God. Listen, when God comes to you, when he calls you, the second assignment is not to use you. When he calls you, listen, he equips you. And part of that equipping is he has to make you get to a point where your mind resonates with his own. And then he can send you anywhere. When he called Moses... He said, Moses, I'm sending you to Pharaoh. And Moses said, uh, I, I know Ramesses. Who do I tell them I said, man? He said, you are calling for a revelation. I am that I am. I want to show you a bit of the possibilities that are in me. And when he showed Moses, he said, on the strength of this mental picture, go. Your life is at the mercy of your thought. First and foremost. Your mind, your thought life. This is the spiritual gateway for birthing ideas. This is the spiritual gateway for birthing creativity. This is the spiritual gateway for manifestation. This happens with the anointing and every other thing. Listen, if you ever will raise a dead, you must have conviction enough to stand before one. Are we together now? When a man walks to a sick body and looks at the sick body, you are seeing that this guy has cancer. Are we together? They are showing you a medical report. Terminal case of cancer. Yet you have the gods to overlook that report. Because there is a higher reality. Your mind has been programmed to see something higher and better. Are we together now? You pray for someone on a wheelchair. Your physical eyes is seeing limbs that are not... I mean, this limb, even if he's well, he can't stand because he's just skin bones. And you have the audacity to hold his hands and say, stand up. Listen, sit down. Your life is a reflection of the excellency of your mindset. That's why all things are not possible for everybody. The Bible never said all things are possible for everybody. It says to him that believes. Your first assignment is not to look for money to prosper. Believe me. Your first assignment is not to look for a job or a business idea. Please believe me on this. Your first assignment is not to run around looking for helpers. Your first assignment is to stay and rise to a point where your mindset, where you are obsessed with the possibilities, where the word of God literally is like your mirror. The same way when you look at a mirror, you see yourself. Are we together now? The Bible says, as we behold him, we are changed. There is a transition. There is a transition. The workers, listen, none of you signed any form that you will come for koinonia this evening. Did you sign any form? But the workers came as early as maybe six, seven, eight. And they started dressing everything. The worship team was preparing. You know why? Because something has happened to them. There is an understanding. They know that God will draw his people to himself and bless them. Imagine if they sat down and said, let's watch. If we see people come. Are we together now? I mean, who told the people that there will be an overflow outside? Don't say it's because it has been happening. There was a first day.
brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. The oil was at the mercy of the vessel. The oil was not small. The vessel was small. So the, oil, the vessel made the oil look small. Are we together? The prophet said, go and enlarge your capacity. Borrow vessels. He said, borrow not a few. Enlarge your capacity. The moment they were vessels, the oil started multiplying. I learned this early in life. I've studied Jesus Christ and I've studied very successful people. Every successful person in life, every person that has been used mightily by God, first and foremost got to a point where they were convicted that the ability of the Spirit can work in and through them. Are we together now? Everyone, every single one of them. It took them time, but they stayed until they got to a point where their construction was unwavering. So you hear Job speaking things like, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. He says, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait till my change comes. In other words, he knew his change would come. When David was in the cave of Adullam, he knew that inevitably he was meant for the palace. Listen, listen, the devil stands helpless in the face of a man who has made the word of God his mentality. At that point, Satan becomes powerless, truly in your life, because you are no longer governed by the circumstances and the things that your optical eye sees. Your convictions are higher than your physical perceptions. So you know that God is able. Now, the question is, Satan has surrounded, or the issue is, Satan has surrounded our lives. Listen, he has surrounded our lives with things that compel us to think in a certain way. This is what cosmos is all about. Babylon, the, this godless system, Satan has created structures around our environment. They are called mind control systems. From the movies. Are we together now? To the way people behave, right? To spiritual forces that influence men. All of them are aimed at bringing people to think in a certain way. So by the time a lady watches a movie and she finds out that evil is celebrated, in that movie, a lady steals a man's money and they clap for her as being brave. So the devil gives your mind a new definition of what great means. That whenever you are able to oppress another successfully, you are great. And so you receive it. Are we together now? And then eventually, from morning till night, we walk out in the morning and return to our homes with all kinds of ideologies that are not consistent with the word of God. And what we keep seeing in our lives is a physical manifestation of things we did not bargain for. But you thought about them long enough. That thought life became so powerful that it necessarily made us to start speaking it. Listen, there is a difference between speaking just because you want to talk and you are responding to the overflow of the content in your mind. The Bible says every time your mind is full, you must speak. It's not about whether you want or not. Uh -uh. He said, be ye filled with the spirit. Immediately say you will start speaking. So the moment your mind is full, your mouth will start speaking. Is God helping us? And so we begin to speak. And while we are speaking, we do not know that we are creating. Every time there is a union between your thought life and your words, there must be creation. So we call ourselves names that we have thought about for so long. And we have verbalized. And then our lives inevitably become it. Job said this. He said, the things that I feared most have come upon me. He feared many things. But the one he feared most became his reality. Are we together? There were many things he was afraid of. But the most dominant fear became his reality. So if you want to reign in life, you must realize 
that part of your assignment with the Holy Spirit and the word of God is to come to a point where you think like Christ. I love Jesus. They brought five loaves and two fish. Say, ah, how are we going to feed these people? Jesus said, no, 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 no. Be silent. Don't corrupt my mindset. I know all things are possible. I'm El Shaddai. That you cannot see it does not mean it's, it's not there. And he told them, no. He lifted it and he gave thanks. And he told the people, he said, go and start sharing it. Sir, what about the embarrassment? Go and start sharing it. And the Bible says, as they were going. This is why you find out that certain things happen to people in certain ways. Your father kept calling you stupid from birth. At 11 years, you were behaving helplessly stupid. Now, he thought he was venting anger. He did not know he was creating. Are we together now? They started calling the lady prostitute. You don't stay in your home. You go to somebody's home. And at age 13, 14, she looks back and sees that ah, she's beginning to have a lustful desire for men. Because every time your mind, I'm not just talking of hallucination. When your mind holds on to it like a conviction and your word speaks, it's like a woman and a man meeting together. There must be creation. I never confess things I don't believe because I'm wasting my time. Are we together? I pray that you will find, you will see light in what I'm sharing with you. When you see this, you will know that there is nothing coincidence about a man's destiny. Every man receives the fruit of what he created or allowed others to create for him. Hallelujah. And so every time your physical life is manifesting things that are not consistent with what the word of God says, the key is not to complain. The key is to take your eyes away. The Bible says looking unto Jesus. Not looking on to your circumstances. Not looking on to your situations. Looking on to Jesus. He calls him the author and the finisher of our faith. Right from the time we were 10, 20 in this ministry. I already saw a crowd. I preached that way. I behaved that way. My convictions have never increased or decreased with people. Because what is in me is stronger than what I see. What you are seeing today is what I spoke yesterday. Tomorrow will tell you what I'm speaking now. Are you getting what I'm saying now? No, 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 no. What you are seeing today is not my mindset of today. <laughs> the physical realm always delays. The realm of the spirit is faster. I've gone ahead of this realm. Because there is the power of creation. You can change any situation in your life. It may take a while, but as far as the heaven is above the earth, you can change it. The first thing is not just to shout and say, God forbid! God forbid is not a confession. It's just an attempt to be human. Are we together now? There are so many people who make all kinds of statements without the conviction to support it, and so there are only statements, no creation. I will never fail me. God forbid. I won't fail. Yet you, you are seeing it right before you. Because you see, what you are saying and what you are thinking are not the same. So there is no creation. Are we together now? There are many pastors who keep speaking and saying, in the name of Jesus, I have this and that and that, but the truth is their convictions are not true. After the church service, when they now sit down in a non-church platform, they start saying the things they really believe. So, oh boy, man, the truth is, Kai, it's not easy. Oh. To be a man is not a day's job, truly, truly. That's what they believe. You see that? That's their conviction. It's easy for us to use all kinds of spiritual words on stage. Thee and thou, and you know God is faithful. Everybody say God is faithful. But the truth is, whatever is the pivot of your thinking is what will be your expression even when you are alone. 
Uh, when I'm alone, I say the same thing. I look at myself and I prophesy. And I speak. This is not just positive thinking. This is kingdom living. Are, are we together now? It's, it's not just positive thinking, brothers and sisters. Creation did not stop on the seventh day. God only rested. Creation is still on. That's what makes us gods, co-creators. But we have lost the art of understanding God's technology of creation. It's not just speaking. It's speaking on the strength of a conviction. That's what produces creation. Hallelujah. What is the sum total of your ideology while you are seated here? Many of us believe all kinds of lies that the devil has put in us. And Paul is saying, finally, he says, I've, I've discussed other issues with you, but I cannot end this epistle this way. Finally, whatsoever things are true, don't think lies. What is a lie? Anything the word of God did not endorse. Anything at all. So your situation currently is a lie, as far as the word of God says. Hmm. See, see, the Bible puts it this way. I love the Bible. It inspires me. It says, listen, it says, for our light affliction. Imagine the hell you are going through and the Bible calls it light. For our light affliction. <laughs> then it says, which is but for a moment. It costs 10 years a moment. Now, it's up to you to choose to believe what the word has said. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. It says, it worketh in us. A far more exceeding weight of glory. Then he says this. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. How do you see what is unseen? He never said the things that are unreal. It only said they are unseen. That tells you all you see is not all there is. Brothers and sisters, there are microorganisms in this room. You cannot see them. But you keep something, keep kunu, leave it open for four days and see what it will turn into. It reveals to you that there are microorganisms, there are bacteria all around. To be carnally minded, is to be governed entirely by your vision, your, your physical vision. And the devil knows that we are people who walk sensually. And so he has taken advantage of our senses to corrupt the reality of this principle. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. You get the glory. You get the praise. You get the praise. You take the honor. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. God cannot do much with you if your mind does not authorize him to create realities in your life. God wants to find expression in your world. He wants to do a lot of great and mighty things. But he's dependent on your mindset. It's not just speaking. You speak on the strength of conviction. The world, our parents, our environment, right? The mindset in Nigeria has made us to think in a certain way. To an extent that when you fail... Right? When things are not working in your life, rather than staying with God and staying true until there is a manifestation, you look for somebody who has failed more than you and you justify it. You see an ideology. It's supposed to be a solidarity, a comfort, but it has destroyed us. So someone comes with a membership of 20 people and then God shows you that I can do more with you. And you say, am, am I not better than this guy? At least I'm, I'm 20, he's 4. And by that we guarantee our mediocrity. And we remain there. Never to rise. Never to rise.
Let me tell you how I came. I lock up myself in a room or wherever there is, and I pray in tongues. I soak myself with worship, and I take a journey through the word of God because I don't trust anything else. Believe me. Any other thing outside the word of God is a lie. Now, it's difficult to convince you because for us, a lie is anything you cannot see, you cannot touch, or anything that is not true based on a reference. Jesus said, I am the way. I am reality. Not just an information that is correct. Truth is not what is correct. Truth is what has life in it. Anything that does not have the life of God in it is not true. That's why it may be a physical reality that you have a lump, a breast lump or a growth on your legs. But the word of God tells you, listen, listen, listen. The word of God tells you that that is an affliction that can leave. It opens you up to the possibility that it can leave. It's up to you to now dwell on this physical reality and die with it. Listen, when remember in, in the Bible... Remember in the Bible, that's why your eye, your eye is very important in your dominion. What you see, physically and spiritually. Remember, brothers and sisters, the Bible teaches us that there was a time, listen, there was a time when the nation of Israel were dying and all of that and all of that, serpents and so on and so forth. And he told Moses to make a serpent and put it up. Remember? And he said, if you can just look at it, you will be free. It matters what you see. It matters what you look at. You cannot sit down watching all kinds of devilish movies, watching all kinds of things, exposing yourself to environments that feed your mind wrongly. And then you want your life to conform to the word of God. It will not happen that way. So I surround myself. I soak myself with this atmosphere of worship. And then I begin to take a journey through the word of God. I read the book of Joshua. And I see what God told me. That no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. And like a camera. That's it. You see that? You see what this camera is doing? That's what your mind does to everything. Your mind snaps everything. It's up to you to delete every junk in your mind. By the word of God. Your mind is like a camera. Listen. If you check this right now, you will see what was captured. How many of you, look at me, how many of you have posed well for a picture? You thought you posed well, but when you checked what it captured, your eyes were closed. You would have argued that you didn't close your eyes. But at the point of capture, that's it. That's how our minds are. You think you are getting it right, but your, your reality is telling you something is wrong up there. If we are to Look at these pictures right now. You may think you were standing very cute, but you find out that you were even like this sleeping. But you can never remember when you did that. The camera can remember. You see that? So you begin to see repeated woes in your life and say, when did I do this? I go to church every day. I pray. And your mind says, well, as far as I'm concerned, every time you spoke, you spoke things that were not consistent with your mind. And the few times you spoke what was consistent with your mind, there was creation. This is the child. Oh, we are failures. It's not for us. This and that and that and that. It's not for people like us. And listen, the, the most, the most, the, the saddest part of this is people who are negative about life. Have you seen people like that? Let me advise you, run away from them quickly. Even if you grew up together, it's time to break away from them. There are people who stand close to you. In five minutes, they are saying something negative. It's a devilish attitude. Believe me, if that thing is at work in your life, you need a retreat. Use the weekend. Retreat. Sam, come. <laughs> is it that, is it that in, in in Koinonia, people are allowed to just sleep like that while a message is going on. You see what he's thinking. 
Are we together now? And then you move around and you are looking. Eh, I'm seeing must Pastor Shegu and his wife go and go. What are they trying to tell us? <laughs> are we together? And then you saw that cake now. You see, they, their minds are negative. They always look for what is not working well. That's why their lives fail. So they try to attract people to themselves who are like them. He said, look, you may be a sincere person, but it must change. There are people like that. They never are optimistic about life. Good morning. What is good about the morning? That's why the Bible says, this is the day the Lord has made. It did say the Lord and Satan. This is the day the Lord made. Like you cook food for somebody. This is the day that the Lord made. He said, let us rejoice and be glad. Not complain and be angry. Listen. This is the revelation I have. So I come out in the morning and somebody insults me. And I remember this is the day the Lord has made. My assignment for me to receive what he has made is until I rejoice and I am glad. Listen, listen. This looks little, but I'm teaching you something. The Bible is saying in the realm of the spirit, the day has been made. Because it says he daily loads us with benefit. It has not manifested yet. There is a condition. Your condition is rejoice and be glad. Rejoice and be glad. Because God made the day. Satan also made the day. There is how you receive what he has made. So every time you wake up, there are two days in one. You choose the day you want to see. So I get up in the morning thinking, I'm awake. Somebody will be saved because of my life today. Someone will be filled with the Holy Spirit because of my life today. Koinonia is rising higher. And somebody calls you and says, do you know that I'm, I've not eaten anything? And I say, don't worry, our light afflictions, which is but for a moment. This is, I'm showing you how I'm thinking. Listen, I'm not just saying this because I'm, I'm acting here. It has become my construction. It's impossible to entertain any negative thought without a scripture rising as a standard. If I lack explanation for the situation like Job, I will say God is greater. God is greater. Lord, I count you faithful. The reason why your day is always a tragedy is because there is no rejoicing. Satan knows that. And so from, it's, it's from your bedmate. Right? Immediately you wake up, you just look and say, why are you looking ugly like this? Say, Please don't try me. I'm, 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 I'm angry this morning. I had a, a, a dream that is not supposed to be. The moment you step down, you find out that there's no light for you to bath. You see, there are orchestrations in your life, but the Bible says rejoice and be glad. It didn't say rejoice because good things are happening. Rejoice as a rule. Rejoice as a key. Are we together now? How many of you wake up and rejoice? In spite of the fact that immediately you rejoice, somebody just sends you a text and say, I've been tolerating you for a long time. I just want you to know that I heard what you said about me. Well, I he if I did this and that. And you read the text. Listen. Listen. It's up to you to allow that thing in your mind and start speaking. And you find out that for one hour you are thinking and resentment is becoming your most dominant thought. And you verbalize it. Oh God, punish somebody for me. See, the Bible says, do not say before an angel, I made a mistake. Because they execute the words of the saints. Are we together? I never allowed, see... You can't be great thinking the way people are thinking. Somebody comes and tells you certain things and you say, God bless you. I rejoice in the Lord. The Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. He emphasizes it. He never said rejoice because you are happy. You went to the board and you saw what looked like, um, it didn't look like your destiny and you, you, you just laughed. Not just that you move around and then you stand and say, anybody that tries me will die in this place. They know. 
creation is happening every day every time unfortunately most of what we are creating in our lives are tragedies and setbacks another aspect to this is anything you do not celebrate in another person you are not authorized to have it in your life oh this is a key in the spirit for as long as i keep talking about sam forget about stepping into the worship anointing i will never for as long as i trivialize mike's grace you see that many of us do not have this attitude of genuinely celebrating people see see from this night i'm giving you an assignment remove the negativism out of your atmosphere and you'll be amazed to see what will begin to happen in your life one of the happiest person I've seen in my life is a gentleman called Alex. Not many of you know him. Alex is a very interesting personality. He used to play bass guitar for me before he traveled abroad to study. The only time I saw Alex sick, he said he had malaria. I couldn't believe it because he was laughing. I said, Alex, malaria. No, you are, you are kidding. I've never seen him angry. Believe me, those who know him will tell you. He used to cook. He uses hot pot. He will cook and because I don't eat much, he will just fetch more. I say, Pastor Josh, this is your oats. He will just push it and sit down with the pot and eat it. Always laughing. I mean, there was a time we lost one of our sisters years ago. And he stood, everybody was being remorseful. He was trying to be remorseful. And I laughed. I said, this is not you. You are a joyful person. Those kind of people hardly fall sick, if at all. They are very happy. They don't see no masquerade chasing them in any dream. Because they are happy. They are happy. The praise of God is in their mouth. They are always optimistic. Are, are we together now? Always optimistic. Listen, work with people like that. They are always optimistic. Every time they see challenges, tell them, don't worry. There's a better day. These are the kinds of people to work with. Not those who say, let's sit down here, I told you. Next time when I talk, you will listen to me. No, no, don't work with those kinds of people. There are pastors I will never work with. They are negative. They are cynical. They are always complaining. Why is ministry not working? Ministry is working. Are we together? Never, I will never become a party to those kinds of things. No. God is faithful. The Bible says the path of the just and the just, it shines brighter and brighter. And as a pastor, you have to be careful. Don't carry your bad day and come and land it on your congregation. There are congregations that study the, the pastor. The moment they see the man like this, they know they are in for it. Because now he comes up and see those who are pastors laughing. You may not understand. Sometimes you can really be angry. And those who have annoyed you are there seated. And after singing the praise and worship, you are now looking. And then you say, stand up. And they, they pretend as if they didn't hear it. Did, did I not say, stand? I will curse you now. In this church, you people don't give, you don't honor your leaders. People are suffering. Maybe the guy is broke. Things are not working. He has come on stage. The members are not cooperating. You are not sowing. No prophet offering. No love offering. No seed of honor. The man is frustrated. His wife is telling him, look, let leave this job. Go and leave this ministry. Go and look for a job. And it carries that anger. And then everybody's in trouble. The drummer is in trouble. The keyboardist is in trouble. Usually it's the worship team that gets to receive the, the lash. You, you know that, right? Let's appreciate the worship team. You don't know what they go through. Really. Then immediately you finish all kinds of I choose to be positive. It's a choice. I choose to be true. I refuse to meditate on negative things. My life is a blessing. Listen, we're going to pray. I, I just showed us this principle. I will never think on things that are not true. I will never think on things that are not pure. I will never think on things that are not noble. I will, I, no man will preach me into this. No. There's no amount of message. I will not declare my loyalty to anybody who is negative. No. I love you, but carry your trouble and go away. I see life only in one direction. Only one direction. 
the way the word of God says it should be. And no matter what is in my obstacle now, what is in me is bigger than it. It's a matter of time. My physical reality will always, inevitably, oh, that you will believe this. And you will know that that one shoe you have is not all that there is. And you stop feeling negative. You will celebrate that moment because you are waving it goodbye forever. Are we together now? Pressure is a product of a poor perception. This is the reason why many people are under pressure. You are trying to buy a suit of 100,000 or 200,000 now because you are trying to show you are successful. Listen, 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 listen. If you can agree with God up here, Satan is no longer a factor. The only way Satan stops your harvest is to stop your seed time. Once it is sown, it becomes automatic. And the word of God is that seed. You ask the leaders, every time we're having leaders meeting, we don't have time for any sorrowing and mourning. When our sister transited to be with the Lord, we had our time of, uh, you know, just talking, but I challenged them at once. I said, no grieving. Remember my message that night. Why would you preach such a message when people have had certain things? Because her transition is not a tragedy. We know exactly where she is and whatever it is that the devil orchestrated, we are happy that she's rejoicing. Paul said, for, for me to live is Christ. He says to die. He uses a business language. Gain. Gain. I refuse to be negative. There is nothing any man will do to me. Listen, that will make me sit down. I'm just negative and say, oh God, some of you, oh God, take my life. You will soon die. No, 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 no. It's not a negative prophecy. It's a warning. It's a caution. We do it. Oh God, no marriage, no job, nobody toasting me. Listen, listen. There is an atmosphere around you that is making that happen. You won't agree, but I'm telling you this. There is an atmosphere. I've seen ladies, please um, don't, 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 uh, don't think that I'm using this against any lady. I've seen certain ladies that may not even consider themselves to be as good looking. And you see the kind of brothers coming because they are optimistic. They know I will marry. They talk about their children with confidence. And you who stand and say, children, uh, where is the man? And then you find out that they sit down and true to it in your presence. Five people are calling and say, agree for me. Now I'm ready to marry you. And you are there with your negative atmosphere. Human beings have prophetic atmospheres. They can repel or bring things to your life. Right? So a guy wants to say hello to you. They say, turn around and, 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 and turn around and say hello to your, your, your neighbor. And a, a guy walks to you and you carry your anger and bitterness. That guy came for koinonia just like you. How are you, sweetheart? Sweetheart, don't stop there. No. This person that is talking, is maybe he's even getting married soon. You now carry your anger. You create. This is why many people don't have friends. Two weeks and the friends are tired of them. Because there is an atmosphere that drives every good thing out of your life. A negative atmosphere. An atmosphere that is, is, is from a wrong mindset. He said, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable. You will never hear me say anything negative about Koinonia. I'm the number one fan of this ministry. I only see what God is doing and I celebrate it. You will not see me sit down and be talking about another man of God. And I'm telling you, Pastor Alpha, did you know that we saw blue flower in his church instead of yellow? No, never. Never. You must become very kingdom-minded and positive. I guarantee you, if you speak on the strength of that conviction, things will change in your life. I expect people to bless me every day. I'm surprised if they don't bless me. I expect it. It's not pride, it's the truth. Even this night. There are people, who say, no, 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 no. I, this is my mind. You, you don't expect anything. You are even surprised when it comes. You say, for me, 
Are you sure I'm the one not to give it? Why can't you? Listen, 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 listen. What makes you think you do not deserve it? Say, I deserve the blessings of God. Shout it. I deserve the blessings of God. Say it one more time. I deserve the blessings of God. I'm not teaching you carnality. I'm teaching you how to walk in victory. Many people always believe is, is the chaff that belongs to them. If you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more, brothers and sisters, with your heavenly father give? How much more? Every time you talk to people, there are some of you, you talk about people and say, what's the latest? What's the latest mean what is wrong in the person's life now? After six months of not meeting the person. Are we together now? What's the latest? Oh, she has a shop, so what's the latest? Oh, it looks like nobody is even coming. I said it, I said it. I choose to believe the word. I choose to allow it become the construction of my mindset. Jesus said this, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he also do, and greater works. Brothers and sisters, I believe this. I don't know who is not working for, and I really feel bad for them, but as far as I'm concerned, this thing is going to work for me. There will always be people coming for koinonia. Lives will keep being changed. We will keep rising from glory to glory. When people say there is a casting down, for us here, there is a lifting up. It's by the hand of God. The anointing of the spirit will never run dry in this house. At every point, there is increase. The word of God will never be scarce. It will never lose its place. Every time you come for koinonia, you will keep being blessed. That name will keep rising. This is my mindset. This is what I believe. This is how I live. In the open and in the secret, in my sleep, this is what I believe. I believe that favor follows me like a shadow. Everywhere I go, even people who do not want me, there is something upon me that compels them to bless me. I expect it. When it happens, I say, that's right. Consistent. I'm not going to betray my destiny with a negative confession. I will not. I will not. I will not. Jesus is glorified consistently in my life. Everywhere I go to minister, they receive the touch of God. I am a blessing. I'm not a liability to any man. I'm not a cost to any man. I choose to believe I am a blessing. Because he said, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Are we together? These are the, this is, is part of the secrets that has preserved and multiplied the anointing of the spirit upon my life. Don't you think it's just prayer and fasting alone? There is an understanding that keeps the anointing comfortable in me. Nothing in me will choke the anointing out of me. Because I have learned to create the atmosphere. I have an unction from the And I move. That's why you will keep coming. You will drag yourself from your room by an agency you cannot explain. It's called anakazo. It's at work. It's the compelling power of the spirit. Supported by a healthy mindset. I will never be a failure in life. Me and poverty are signed up forever. I waved it goodbye, it waved me back. There's no possibility of meeting again. I lift my hands in worship as I sing praises to your name. I lift my hands in worship as I sing, glory to your name. Son of man, what seest thou? He said, son of man, what seest thou? He said, as far as your eyes can see, to you I will give as an inheritance. He said, Abraham, from where thou art, it's okay that you are where you are, but from where you are, he said, lift up your eyes. From where you are, lift up your eyes and see. Northward, southward, eastward, westward. He said, as far as your eyes can see. Brothers and sisters, I see far. I see far. 
Are you seeing your today or you are already seeing what God has designed? Listen, if you see it, brothers and sisters, you can carry your 250 naira trouser and move happily because what people are seeing is a mirage. They will soon see what is true. The Bible says the things that are, on, that are seen are temporal. Temporal. I see a ministry with prosperity and abundance. I see a ministry touching people all over the globe. I see a ministry winning souls and saving lives. I see a ministry blessing people like, an, like a tree, like an edifice. That's what I see. That's what I see. I see a family of peace. I don't see myself being a wicked father. I don't see myself being an irresponsible father. I choose to be a good man. I, are we together now? It's a choice. This is what I see. I see Koinonia having the best workforce any ministry can have. That's why I celebrate them. That's why I honor them. You will never turn and see me embarrass the people I'm embarrassing myself. I love them and they know it. I'm not embarrassed about my love for them. Because they are gifted people. And I've created the atmosphere for them to be motivated by love and revelation. Not force. Is God speaking to us? You've got to culture your atmosphere. Sister, your, the next level of your life is at the mercy of your mindset. You've got to change it tonight. And say, look. The Bible says male and female, he created them. There is somebody who loves me. I may not see the person, but there's somebody who appreciates me. Forget about the one who came and looked at you and said, you think you are fine. Let him carry his trouble and go. But you know what you are looking at. I am a mother who will birth prophets and apostles and preachers. This is the mindset. Are we together now? You look at your academics and it looks like it's nose diving. And you say, I know my redeemer liveth. And people say, let's be real. Be real. You say, this is my reality. I reject that thing you are trying to tell me. My reality is what the word of God says. And I choose to believe it. 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 Ah, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the blessed of the Lord say so. Let the prosperous of the Lord say so. Let the great of the Lord say so. I choose to say it because I believe it. It says, the, the righteousness of faith speaks in this wise. On, on the strength of conviction, you must speak. So we are not just praying blindly. Oh, I know my life is blessed. And you just turn and say, oh boy, we really, well, let's just continue. My life. No, 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 no. That's not conviction. That's not conviction. See, in my little work, I don't boast of being a general in the knowledge of God but I know something about him he is faithful this attribute of God I can tell you experientially God is faithful God is faithful I've seen his faithfulness that's why I take out time to celebrate him those who put their trust in him never go disappointed I guarantee you if you were disappointed you did not put your trust in him if you really put your trust in him, you will watch your way maker step into what looks like there's no way and begin to create ways for you. The night time will look like morning will never come. But when he arises like a mighty man that he is, you will see him move. My own is to keep agreeing with him. Lord, I agree with you. I may not see where I'm going, but I know that with you is a glorious destiny. While you are saying it, they, they laugh at you. No problem. They should keep laughing. Because when it happens, they will say he said it. I will never be ashamed of speaking the word of God. Many of us are embarrassed about it. So you believe it, but you keep quiet. You say, Lord, I thank you because you are changing my story. And, and you now look and they, they laugh at you and they say, Mr. Man, look, let me tell you. If I am God, I will hear your prayer. You that you are praying. See, when they tell you that kind of thing, you feel bad. Ah, I shout it to the mountain top. We are going from glory to glory. From grace to grace. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says. And that's what I believe. That's what I believe. Let this mind be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. The word let there is permit. This is a very simple message tonight. 
that is an attempt to challenge us to know that our thought life has a lot to do with our destiny. When you come to my place, you don't see anything that reminds you of the devil and failure. Nothing. Nothing. Everything reminds me of heaven and greatness. I have a little board where I wrote three scriptures. One about the anointing, one about favor, the other one about, about increase or greatness. And I love it. Some of us are negative. We must change. Negativism will make you birth things you do not want. Please believe me. Pastors, our minds must be stayed on what the word of God has said. There may not be money in the account of the ministry. There may not be this and that, but I choose to believe. I'm not just confessing blindly, but you choose to believe. My God is faithful. My God is alive. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. And when it's time to pray, I want us to believe. As you pray, you pray away these negative things that we have allowed the devil to put in our mind. The Bible says, cast him down every year. There are imaginations that have exalted themselves above the knowledge of the Christ. You went home this morning and there was no magi to cook food. You went home and there was nothing. There was just pepper. And you look at it and say, this is a mirage. My God is faithful. What about the welfare I'll be sending to foundations tomorrow? I see myself doing it. Papa Oyedeko, way before he had the money to buy any designer, shouted, he said, yeah, I can never be poor. He saw something. He saw something. To an extent that he was in America and he said, God sent him down to come and make the people rich with no evidence on your own part. Brothers and sisters, I believe him. I judge him faithful. He has been tested through different dispensations and he has been found faithful. My life is too small to judge the faithfulness of God. From glory to glory You are taking me From glory to glory to glory to glory From glory to glory, you are taking me. Prophesied, glory to glory to glory to glory from glory to glory. You are taking me from glory to glory to glory to glory from glory. To glory, you are taking me. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, that financial scarcity is for a moment, brothers and sisters. That sickness is for a moment. That limitation is for a moment. He said, though weeping endures for a night, he says, joy, joy, joy comes with the morning. You are not the first to see carryover on the board. If you wore a matriculation gown, you will wear a convocation gown. Oh, come on now. There is nothing happening to you that is new. That's why he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. That's where you will hear testimonies that are worse than yours and how God delivered people out of it. You are not the first to not have food to eat. I share this thing humorously. I'll never forget one, one time in my life, I was so broke, things were so bad, I bought bread. Well, for, for some people, that's prosperity now. I bought bread and then with granite and just choked the thing inside and I was just eating and rejoicing. I'll never forget locking myself and dancing. I was dancing because I saw people blessing my life. I said, the anointing in my life is an endangered species. It's impossible for me to be ignored. It's only a matter of time. When I said that, there was no hope of anybody bringing any seed. Two naira to say, take. He is taking you. Sister, you will rise like an edifice. I'm telling you. It's from glory. 
to glory. You are taking me. Personalize it as we prepare to pray. Glory to glory to glory from glory. To glory. You are taking me. Glory to glory to glory to glory from glory to glory. You are taking me. Shout it after me. Say in the name of Jesus. All I see around me is the goodness of God, is the mercy of God, is the favor of God, is the faithfulness of God. All I see around me is increase, glory, beauty, favor. I reject every thought that is not consistent with the word of God. I am a blessing. Lift your voice and begin to prophesy. Lift your voice and prophesy. We cast down by the blood of the eternal covenant every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of the Christ we cast it down we cast down thoughts of failure we cast down thoughts of limitation we cast down thoughts of inferiority oh hallelujah we are well favored the blessed of the Lord, moving from glory to glory. We think only on things that are pure, things that are true, things that are noble, things that have virtues and praise. I refuse to see challenges. I see the faithfulness of God. I see the mercy of my God. Increase on every side, on on every side. Favor on every side. Hey, parada, parada, bashkapa. Rekete te koto soto brekete. Em brekete te te te. Make sure you're praying inside and outside. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit. I tear down every negative thinking, every negative mindset, every thinking on failure, every thinking on mediocrity, everything that makes me look like a nobody. I tear it down in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Oh, I challenge it. Challenge cultural mindset. Challenge the speakings of men over your life and destiny. For as a man thinketh, so he is. For as a man thinketh, so he is. Out of the abundance of your heart, of your mind, of your spirit, your mouth makes proclamations. I reject failure. I reject failure. I reject limitation. I reject failure. I reject limitation. I reject failure. I reject limitation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, listen. It said, we having the spirit of faith, as it is written, I believe and therefore I speak. It said, we also, like faithful Abraham, we believe and we prove that we believe by speaking. Are we together? Everything you know the word of God has said for you, you are going to speak it. You are not just speaking, you are creating. Are you ready now? Lift your voice and prophesy. 
Oh, I'm the head and not the tail. Come on, create realities. Above and not beneath. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him from them all. No man is able to stand against me all the days of my life. My path is as a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. I am like a well-watered garden. The smell of my life is like the field that the Lord has blessed. Increase on every side. Favor on every side. Glad tidings on every side. Prophesy. Prophesy. I declare in the name of Jesus. I'm rising from one level of glory to another. Gentiles come to my light. They are kings to the brightness of my rising. Where I've been deserted so that no man will go through me. I become an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. I'm like a well-watered garden. I am planted in the house of God, and I flourish in the courts of my God. In all age, I am fat and flourishing. I'm like a tree that is planted by the riverside that yields its fruit in season, whose leaf does not wither. Everything I do prospers. Everything I do prospers. There is an unction upon my life that makes things to work. Everything I do prospers. He reigns. He reigns. He is standing by my side. To bring his word to pass, he reigns, he reigns. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns. He reigns, he is standing by my side. One more time. He reigns, he reigns. He reigns. You are standing by my side. You reign, you reign. The last prayer point. Listen, the Bible says, even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things that be not as though they were. Calleth those things that be not as though they were. Calleth those blessings that be not as though they were. Calleth those favors that be not as though they were. Calleth those miracles Call it those connections. Call it those destiny helpers that be not as though they were. Call it those new levels that be not as though they were. Open your mouth and begin to prophesy. Call them into your life. I call for destiny helpers. Pray. I call for prosperity. I call for increase. I call for favor. Call it forth. By the power of the Holy Ghost, you have an anointing upon you. Call it forth. Call for that miracle ministry. Call for that healing ministry. Call for those new levels of the prophetic, new levels of the apostolic, 
new levels of increase. Call for that direction, for the new level of life. Call for those ideas. Call for those strategies for the next level. Call for those connections. Hallelujah. Let's add one more prayer point. Listen. The Bible says, If thou shalt say, not if thou shalt wish, on the strength of your conviction, if thou shalt say to this mountain, not any mountain, a specific mountain, if thou shalt instruct it, be lifted from hands and cast into the sea, and it says you do not doubt in your heart, you will receive, you will have. I'd like us to speak. There seems to be challenges in different areas of our lives. I'm not ignoring their presence. I'm only telling you they can change. Right now, open your mouth. Mention the mountains and tell them the Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. The creator, the owner of the heavens and the earth. Go ahead. Migraine headache. The Lord rebuke you. Poverty. The Lord rebuke you. Delay. I say to you, be lifted and cast into the sea. Setbacks, the Lord rebuke you. Come on, pray. Speak to that mountain. This favor, the Lord rebuke you. Stagnation, the Lord rebuke you. Barrenness, the Lord rebuke you. Cycles of failure, the Lord rebuke you. Hallelujah. after me in the name of Jesus from today I choose and I decide to be positive from today I stop seeing failure I stop seeing limitations I stop living a life of mediocrity from today I declare that there is an anointing upon my life there is greatness upon my life. The hand of God is upon me. I'm not ordinary. From today, I declare that no mountain will be able to stand before me. The wisdom of the Spirit is at work in me. Creative ideas are flowing through me. In the name of Jesus, when men say there is a casting down, I declare that there is a lifting up. My story will be from glory to glory. I reject negative reports. I do not receive them. In the name of Jesus. Listen. When this becomes the construction of your mindset, I guarantee you, your life will be a wonder. To you and to all those around you, they will see an ordinary man, but you will see the results of God. Hallelujah. Before we pray for those who are visiting with us, I'd like us to lift our hands and let me just speak over our lives. Father, you put this word in my heart for your people and I'm praying that every single one of us from tonight give us the grace to reject negativism. 
As a family of faith, Satan will curse you and all you have to offer. In the name of Jesus Christ. We declare that every thinking of limitation leaves our life tonight. Every thinking of failure and setback leaves our life tonight. Every thinking of unbelief. Everyone here that is thinking I cannot make it. I declare to you that there is a hand that is holding you. And in partnership with that hand, you are nothing short of a wonder. In the name of Jesus Christ. I minister to people who have been victims of their past or the scourging tongues of men. People have made pronunciations over your life and have declared to you that you are good for nothing. In the name that is above all names, we change it by the word of God. We change that report by the word of God. I speak to you that you will keep recording one level of victory after another. That every challenge that stands before you will become your testimony tomorrow. I say it again. Every challenge that stands before you becomes your testimony. And all those who laugh at you today will laugh with you tomorrow. In the name of Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.